such as a shift to Delhi working would be higher for smaller business. Though few MSMEs have received financials from the bank post-COVID, there are several others who are in need of such assistance for their revival and getting back to normalcy. MSME lending can be the largest source of value creations for the financial services industry. It is both an obligation and an opportunity uh, for this where the time has come. It will have a multiplier effect on GDP. Further, the sector needs support for mentoring uh, and mentoring in terms of international linkages and reaching out to new markets for their sustainability in this current dynamic trade environment. Uh, for us in Coromandel, it was very fortunate that in agriculture, we were in what is called a, a sector which was supported by the government. And here I would like to compliment the Telangana government on you know, helping us wherever we had a problem with any of our MSMEs who were vendors to us. The government had stepped in to ensure that you know, the raw materials uh, supplies do not get disrupted and the MSMEs are operating. I'm sure with this conference, will be a unique opportunity to discuss some of the key issues and challenges of MSMEs, and also to make them aware of the good practices for competitiveness and finance opportunities from banks and non-banking financial services. I wish the program a grand success and welcome you all once again. Thank you. Over to you, Pratik. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amit sir. Uh, thanks for giving us a brief context about the summit. And um, now next, I would like to invite Mr. Mahesh Deshai to deliver this special address. Mr. Mahesh Deshai mentors CII Telangana MSME panel and managing director Meera and Seco Pumps Private Limited. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Pratusha. Distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, and very good morning. It gives me immense pleasure to deliver this special address with India setting itself a formidable target of nearly doubling its economy to achieve 5 trillion by 2025-26. The MSME sector takes on additional importance, being the largest employer in a country forecasted to have the largest workforce in the world. The sustainability of MSME is the key for the growth of the nation, whether it is agriculture, manufacturing, or service industry. MSMEs are mushrooming in a myriad of sectors across the country. Statistics show that SME accounts for 45% of industrial output and 40% of the total exports in India. The Government of India, tar India's target is to increase MSME present share of 29% of GDP to 50% in the coming five years and raise its export contribution from 49% to 60%. Hence, there is a tremendous opportunity in exports for MSMEs. We need to focus on enhancing the competitiveness of MSME so that they will be able to keep up the standards in global market and compete with other nations. MSMEs are also responsible for producing a diverse range of products and services to meet the needs of not just the local market, but also the national and international value chains. This is what has been emphasized by our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, under Atma Nirbhar Bharat. All this makes it a top vehicle to spread industrial growth across the country, thereby also aiding 
the inclusive growth of masses across the country. MSME are complementary to large industries such as ancillary units, handicrafts, food processing, textiles, etc., and contribute enormously to the socio economic development of the country by not just providing large employment opportunities at com competitively lower capital cost than large industries, but also by way of helping in the industrialization of rural pockets across the country. However, in spite of its contribution to the socio-economic growth of India, SMEs face a number of challenges, namely lack of capital due to inadequate access to finance and credit, inability to attract talented and tech-savvy manpower, lack of internal exposure, and also internal exposure to the national level laboratories and other institutions, and international exposures, poor infrastructure and utilities resulting in low production capacity, lack of innovation, technology and digital knowledge gap, lack of marketing know-how, particularly in today's world, we have to cope up with e-marketing, lack of proper management of finance. Due to these challenges, the Indian SMEs are unable to scale to their full potential, rise up to the standards of their international peers and become self-sustainable. On the positive side, these challenges should be perceived as untapped opportunities for the sector. These challenges offer a broad scope of strength to strengthen the foundation of SMEs in India. There is need for proactive policies supporting the MSMEs in addressing above issues and ultimately seamless integration with global network. There are a few things I would like to emphasize here. One, international tie-up for SME to SME, cooperating with international companies which are specialized in the field of research and development. Our SMEs can do initial part of the research at affordable and appropriate cost. The other part which requires huge investment can be taken up by the counterpart. We have CSIR research and development institutions like DRDO, CCMB, and others. We also have national importance academic institution like IIT Hyderabad, IIIT, etc. So the right infrastructure is available in and around Hyderabad in our state. Let me say there are few companies in Hyderabad who are already tied up with this sort of R&D with a company from America and France. There is an immense scope for exports of high value added products from our state, our government, our minister Sri KTR and our chief secretary Sri Jayesh Ranjan and other officials are also busy in creating the architecture to develop the ecosystem. We would also urge our government to give support in the initial period for research and development to market the value-added products, not only for national market, but also for the international market and to find a place in the global chain, or global supply chain. There are immense opportunities for the Indian MS SME sector to grow and thrive. 
all it needs to do is to adapt the changing trends and embrace digital skills. For this, we require our MSME for exposure to the national and international markets and also arena. I hope this conference will address some of the key issues of the MSME. I wish the program a grand success and welcome you all once again. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for giving all the brief statistics about MSMEs and also uh, addressing about some of the challenges and opportunities in MSMEs. So uh, before I invite the next speaker, uh, I would like, just like to mention, take a moment to mention that Amazon launched several initiatives for MSMEs to accelerate their businesses, digitizing them and help them recover. Amazon is the largest investor in Telangana. They have uh, they are yet to invest like dollar two point seven seven billion dollars in Telangana to set up data centers. I would now like to invite the next speaker, Mr. Pranav Basin, Director, MSME and Seller Experience from Amazon India. Over to you, sir. Uh, thanks, Satisha. Uh, and good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Pranav Basin, uh, Director of MSME and Seller Experience at Amazon India. Uh, and I would like to first start by uh, thanking the government of Telangana uh, and CII Telangana chapter for inviting me to be a part of the MSME Summit 2020. Uh, I would also like to thank all the members of this panel for coming together to participate in this discussion. Uh, and it gives me immense pleasure to be a part of this webinar and to have this opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, I would also like to express my gratitude to the audience who dialed in uh, to watch this discussion uh, and hope that through this session they find useful insight uh, that could help them digitally transform their business, uh, achieving unparalleled growth in times to come. Uh, so India is an important market for Amazon globally. Uh, and we continue to strengthen our presence and participation by supporting the country's growth, uh, creating employment opportunities, uh, investing with a long-term horizon. Uh, and in fact, last year we opened our largest Amazon building in terms of the area globally, uh, and our first owned campus outside of the U.S. in Hyderabad, uh, spread over nearly 10 acres of land. Uh, the new campus can accommodate over 15,000 employees. Uh, and from here, we have introduced uh, local innovations, built nationwide infrastructure, uh, brought in technological improvements that have contributed to expansion of e-commerce. Uh, we started our journey in India in 2013 with uh, a few hundred sellers. And right from the start, our focus has been to enable every motivated seller anywhere in India to reach customers across the country and globally. Uh, and today, there are more than 650,000 sellers on Amazon India Marketplace uh, from different corners of India. Uh, and 90% of these sellers include micro entrepreneurs as well as small and medium businesses. And from Telangana, we have over 23,000 sellers on Amazon.in, uh, and we are selling a wide range of products. So Telangana today is a very important market for us uh, from that perspective, uh, and we have made significant investments over here. Uh, so today, uh, Amazon.in offers storage capacity of more than 4.5 million cubic feet uh, spread across four fulfillment centers, uh, two sort centers, with over 100,000 square feet of processing area uh, and a robust delivery network with more than 80 Amazon-owned and service partner delivery stations in the state. Uh, India, including Telangana, has also specialized in uh, specialized regional clusters for textiles, for handlooms and handicrafts uh, and original art form. Uh, and in fact, Telangana is one of the most important states in the handloom industry as well. Uh, and the state has been focused on implementing measures uh, for socio-economic development of handloom weaver and to play a key role in revival of uh, specialized micro-entrepreneurs like weavers, uh, artisans, uh, craftsmen to benefit from e-commerce and grow their business 
in many cases actually reviving some of the dying art forms from the country uh, we launched a program called karigar uh, way back in uh, 2016 Uh, and as a part of this program, we have partnered with uh, 25 government emporiums and five government bodies uh, to showcase authentic craft uh, to the craft lovers and increase market connectivity. Uh, and through the Karigar initiative, we have onboarded more than 3,000 master weavers, uh, cooperatives, artisans, uh, and apex bodies, including national award-winning weavers, to sell online. Uh, and as of today, uh, the program. has made a difference in life of over 8 lakh individuals spread uh, over uh, weaver communities uh, from over 20 states and union territories uh, and in telangana specifically we work very closely with the uh, department of handloom and textiles uh, government of telangana uh, and dc handloom to educate train enable rural artisans to directly sell their products to adot and customers across the country Uh, and as a part of this program our teams uh, collaborate with on ground partners and government bodies uh, to educate train and skill this community in online selling and thus encouraging the growth of the real make in india offering both to indian consumers and global consumers uh, and by selling on amazon india the viewers from the state uh, have been able to showcase their products to a larger audience Uh, gain fair prices uh, it's helping them generate additional income uh, and raise their standard of living uh, so as an example uh, mr bhaskar he is a master weaver and works with uh, local weavers from koila gudam uh, near pochampalli uh, to make ikat handloom products uh, and after 13 years uh, in corporate life uh, mr bhaskar left it all behind to manage his family's business of supplying ikat sari fabric dress materials and other accessories uh, and mr bhaskar joined amazon as a seller uh, bringing uh, pochampalli ikat handloom sarees and dress materials uh, through amazon karigar since july 2019 uh, and since joining amazon india uh, mr bhaskar has expanded his reach uh, beyond the wholesale market uh, and registered 3x growth in his business And, and today he has expanded his workforce of 70 individuals to over 100 uh, and created by the most skilled artisans of india ikat is uh, a widely known dyeing technique uh, used largely on rugs sarees cushions home living traditional indian wear and life uh, and uh, uh, and it is this weave that mr bhaskar brought back to life uh, in his village uh, koila gudam telangana Uh, and just like mr bhaskar through a partnership with the uh, department of handloom and textiles uh, government of telangana and dc handloom we have been able to uplift the lives of 4500 plus weavers from 56 villages in telangana uh, and with the option of selling products online uh, the weavers from the state will be able to fetch an appropriate price for the unique products that they are creating and it will in turn really help raise their overall standard of living uh uh we talked about uh, pandemic a little bit back and looking at uh, last eight months it seen a truly unprecedented scenario uh, and it has transformed the way we live communicate with each other and actually do business and one of the most significant changes that we have noticed during the pandemic is how consumer behavior has evolved right uh, consumers are moving online Uh, e-commerce is on the rise people are shopping online uh, making payments online uh, watching content online uh, and a lot more uh, and e-commerce has been providing consumers with an essential service as online shopping has emerged as the safest option for consumers to make purchases uh, during this time uh, by ensuring uh, adherence to social distancing norms uh, and at the same time e-commerce has been offering businesses the opportunity uh, to continue catering to the needs of customers uh, and helping minimize the impact of stalled sales and reviving businesses and preventing loss of jobs and even creating uh, new jobs in the process and what we have learned from covid-19 crisis is how important a role amazon uh, and e-commerce can play for our customers uh, for our small businesses Uh, for our economy uh, and we take this responsibility very seriously and we are really uh, proud of the work our teams are doing uh, 
uh, to support customers, small businesses in this difficult time. Uh, in the last six months, we have also taken a number of measures to minimize the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on sellers uh, and help them navigate uh, the economic challenges, uh, including a range of uh, waivers to the fees, uh, relaxation on performance reports, uh, metrics, uh, on uh, uh, enabling them to get payments uh, for the sales that they make on demand. You can click a button and uh, get your payment disbursement at any time you want. Uh, uh, running rewards programs and uh, COVID-19 health insurance uh, so that our seller uh, partners stay safe. Uh, and our biggest focus has been on helping SMBs and MSMEs jumpstart their business and get back on their feet. Uh, and in April 2020, we launched uh, a program called Local Shops on Amazon. Uh, that brings offline retailer shops uh, and helps them serve customers beyond their normal catchment. Uh, so they can actually get demand online and they can then uh, serve it booking. Uh, uh, it helps grow their business uh, in addition to whatever business they are doing uh, offline. Uh, and for example, uh, Mr. V. R. Chari, who owns an appliances showroom in Hyderabad, uh, believes that e-commerce is now really vital to his business. Uh, in fact, during Great Indian Festival, uh, Mr. Chari has seen a spike of 3x and was really happy to receive orders from across the city instead of receiving orders just from Miyapur in Hyderabad, uh, which is what he typically uses. Uh, Mr. Chari says that the shops on Amazon has given him the much needed boost in sales uh, and something that he's found very, very challenging this year uh, in terms of getting into uh, his business. Uh, and uh, we've also seen uh, multiple revolutions in the country from agriculture revolution uh, that enabled scaling the production of food to telecom revolution that allowed us to break down geographical barriers and bring us all closer. And we are now really on the edge of uh, another revolution, uh, which is the e-commerce revolution. Uh, and one that is transforming the way India buys and sells. Uh, and this will be driven by millions of MSMEs in India who are adopting digital technology uh, to build and scale their businesses to massive proportions. Uh, one of the biggest opportunities that e-commerce offers businesses is its ability to break down geog geographical restrictions. Uh, and businesses can get online, they can effectively sell to millions of customers across the country uh, and even globally. Uh, so this furthers the scope of acceptance of products in different markets. It helps business owners get the right value for the products and it helps them scale. Uh, and the next opportunity that e-commerce provides is the ability to run national or even global businesses with limited investments, uh, literally at a fraction of the cost associated with running a business of the same scale traditionally. Uh, and the process of running an online business allows business owners to focus on their core competency, uh, which is creating great products, while associated processes like inventory management, customer support, uh, packaging, shipping can actually be taken care of by Amazon. Uh, and third, and perhaps the most important opportunity uh, that e-commerce has to offer is a level playing field for businesses of all sizes and scales. So anyone from a single entrepreneur to the largest business can find value in an online marketplace. Uh, and everyone is given an opportunity to break geographical boundaries and sell to millions of customers across the country. Uh, and in the last few months, we are actually seeing heightened interest amongst businesses across India to move online uh, to start and scale their business. So there is a 60 to 80% spike that we see in new sellers registry. Uh, and we also did a survey with several businesses to understand uh, what their need was to overcome from the impact of COVID. Uh, uh, and 75% of them responded that they would opt for an e-commerce service like Amazon uh, to scale their business. Uh, and the story of Mr. Chari that I shared earlier is a classic example of how SMBs are looking at e-commerce service like Amazon uh, to scale their business. Uh, so just to conclude, uh, uh, having said that, uh, we understand uh, uh, that different businesses have uh, different unique needs. Uh, and for this, we created uh, specific programs tailored to needs of businesses of various sizes and scales. Uh, and uh, uh, we have the Amazon Carriger program catering to artisans and weavers uh, and geared towards helping them receive the right value for their craft. Uh, 
we have Amazon Sahili, which is a program that's geared towards supporting women entrepreneurs. Uh, we have Amazon Launchpad, uh, that is a program that supports emerging brands and startups. Uh, we also enable sellers to go global and engage in e-commerce through Amazon Global Selling. Uh, and we recently, as I mentioned earlier, launched local shops on Amazon to bring offline retailers online and help them serve customers beyond their normal catchment. Uh, we've been focused on creating the right infrastructure for adoption of e-commerce across the country. Uh, we needed to make it accessible through a uh, most widely used form of technology, uh, which is mobile phones. Uh, and with Amazon India seller app, for example, businesses can now manage their Amazon business end to end on their phones uh, without requiring a desktop. And we've also uh, focused on vernacular and regional language assistance to train new sellers to help them get online and even manage their business in language of their choice. Uh, today, we uh, have more than 12 and a half uh, Hindi seller registrations on the marketplace, uh, 12 and a half thousand. Uh, and only expect this number to rise further as seller experience is offered in more and more Indian languages. Uh, and to break the language barriers uh, for online shopping uh, and expand e-commerce uh, to native language speakers, uh, we have launched uh, uh, Amazon Shopping in Telugu as well. And the last part of providing the right infrastructure to our seller to sell online uh, is ensuring uninterrupted and scalable packaging delivery services. Uh, for which we have various programs and initiatives in place. Uh, and this is why over 90% of sellers use Amazon's logistics and uh, warehousing services to reach customers across the country. And this year's great Indian festival has seen uh, the biggest ever opening for sellers and brand partners on Amazon. Uh, bringing happiness to millions of customers across the country. Uh, and uh, our sellers have witnessed great success during the sale events we organized this year, uh, which include Small Business Day uh, 2020, as well as Prime Day, which were some of the two biggest uh, days for SMBs ever on Amazon. Uh, and uh, we will continue to support uh, our great Indian sellers accelerate their business uh, and uh, get back to their feet. Uh, and uh, with that, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, close my uh, talk and I sincerely hope uh, that the uh, festive season brings happiness and cheer to all of you and your family and that you all uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Pranav, uh, for explaining clearly about the opportunities for MSMEs in e-commerce sector and also uh, Amazon playing a key role for uplifting all these sellers. Thank you so much once again. And next, I would like to invite Mr. O.P. Mishra, Chief General Manager, State Bank of India, to deliver this special address. Sir, over to you, please. Uh, good morning, all of you. Thank you, Pratyusha. So, dear Suresh Ranjanji, Principal Secretary, Industries, Government of Telangana, uh, Mr. Samir Goel, Mr. Mahesh Desai, Mr. V.S. Reddy, Mr. Praveen Bhaseen, Mr. Jhang, and all esteemed dignitaries who are present over this webinar. I'm really thankful to CI Telangana for giving me this opportunity to speak on this occasion for MSME in Telangana. Friends, it's a repetition. It will not add any value if I start again repeating what is the importance of MSME and how it's a growth engine for employment also and growth also in this country. Everybody knows all these things, but Though technically for, we are doing everything for MSME, but if you see the history, India got independence in 1947 and we had our first policy in 1948, then 1956. But despite all these things, this sector is facing challenges from the very beginning. Maybe we can blame you, you can blame me, somebody can blame somebody, but if you see you go to majority of industrial parks, industrial estates of the country, they became barren lands due to various issues. Again, in the last three, four years, to bring and inculcate discipline among the business and industries is GST and uh, demonetization. Again, this sector faced great challenges. And again, but COVID was a new challenge because COVID was totally external. It was not linked to any individual, any organization, any policy, any government, and it impacted most of the sectors, particularly MSME.
but if you see for the last 3 months there is some positive hope in the country it's quite heartening to note that there is a uptick in the pace of manufacturing in the second quarter after the lockdown in the first quarter and this is evident from manufacturing index as well as gst collections for which data has recently come uh, in the newspapers and in the media so this is mainly possible due to lot of constant efforts and stimuli given by the government of india for msmes in fact government was very proactive in identifying the issues faced by msmes and has come with various policies and first and foremost was redefining msme sector to enlarge the scope to give more uh, funding and more uh, help to the sector uh, again this scheme of udyog registration certificates credit linked capital subsidy scheme contactless lending program for quick approval of msme loans in 59 minutes their trades to improve the liquidity of msmes and uh, again under this atmanirbhar bharat lot of initiatives like uh, gcl pm swanidhi scheme were launched due to which there is lot of traction in the msme sector so in the light shown by the government of india and government of telangana bank is also totally in hand in sync with all the people and all the stakeholders for providing help and to support msme in the state of telangana in fact you all know that the msme was our bread and butter in 50s 60s and 70s but due to various stress in this sector and again due to some easy uh, business growth in housing and retail sector many banks including sbi focused on mainly retail growth personal loans housing loans and there are slightly some less attention was given to msme in 90s and in the first decade of the century but again for the last one year our main slogan is sbi for msme so though we are here for each and every segment but currently our main focus in the country and telangana is on msme segment how to give more credit to all eligible msmes at all levels it's not only big or small like we tell from right from a needle to a sword we are doing under this pm swanidhi scheme 10000 loans to uh, street vendors uh, a stand up india loan for um, startups uh, stand up for uh, uh, new ventures up to 1 crore from 10 lakhs mudra for again a small borrowers so each and every segment we are doing our best and giving best possible help to so that there is no reason no stress in this sector due to lack of funds and frankly to create because i as i told lack of skill and lack of focus was one main reason for degrowth in msme segment i will tell you some examples there are some msme branches in this circle we are doing mainly car loans and personal loans and not msme loans so now we have a greater thrust and our bank has revamped the whole sme vertical across the country in this state in telangana we have exclusive 51 sme branches sme intensive branches with relationship managers to handle the requirements of sme customers only sme customers they will not do any housing or any personal segment loans they only focus sme customers so that there is complete focus and synergy between industries and the uh, banks again further as a part of sme vertical revamp one sme region sme region means consisting of some branches 10 branches 15 branches across the modules so in each module we have four modules in this con- uh, circle one hyderabad sikandrabad telangana uh, nalgonda and warangal we have one sme rm sme region with some branches to focus only on sme segment loans again for quicker disposal of loans we have seven credit processing cells across telangana state to process the credit requirements of micro and small segment customers up to 50 lakhs and again committee approach is there so that loans are sanctioned easily and without any fear of accountability so committee sanctions loans up to any amount whether at the lso level or the corporate level depending on the amount of the loan again many of my colleagues from uh, cia are aware that we were the first one before government of india after lockdown to introduce our common covid emergency line of credit 
to finance MSMEs affected by COVID pandemic. And this emergency line of credit was extended up to 10% of the existing fund based facility enjoyed by the unit. And only in Telangana estate, SBI provided 415 crores plus to about around 4,000 MSME units under our COVID finance limit. Again, as I told, under Atmanirbhar Bharat, we have sanctioned around 44,000 GECL. 44,000 GECL loans amounting to rupees 1,500 crores so far and about rupees 1 crore to 81 units under distressed asset fund and again 40 crores to about 1,8,000 beneficiaries under PMSPM Sonehi scheme. I would like to tell that our Telangana estate is one of the smallest estate population wise if you discount some hilly estates of Northeast. It is one of the smallest estates like Assam or Kerala, but under PM Swanidhi, our number is third highest after UP, which is a very big estate, and Madhya Pradesh, and we are the third. Again, Mudra also, we are topper in the country. Again, under Stand Up India, under various tie-ups with government of Telangana, we are topper in the whole country. MSME units. They have some mismatch of liquidity, but they are not able to produce papers, balances or some uh, papers required by the bank. So first time bank has brought gold of units. And I'm happy to tell that in the whole country till date, only in the last two months, we have sanctioned more than 14, 15,000 SME gold loans to SME customers of Telangana estate. Again, as per direction given by government of India, we have dedicated portal SBI loans 59 minute calm for contactless, contactless lending platform to provide a hassle free experience to MSME customers. To support the customers on account of liquidity mismatch, we extend a standby line of credit for MSMEs to meet the temporary mismatch arising out of delayed receivables. Again, we are the one bank where, like Amazon told regarding their digital experience, Mudra loans up to 50,000 rupees is fully digital. Customer is not required to come to the branch for taking the loan under eMudra. And again, Telangana State is the champion in this country in providing eMudra loans to borrowers. And our bank has told we are trying our level best to shift all small loans on digital platform by June 21 so that customers are not required to come to the branches for any loan and the inconvenience faced by them is redressed to maximum possible extent. Again, as everybody told, uh, all my speak uh, great speakers told regarding this COVID has given a great opportunity to MSME units, but they have to again reorient their total thought process. Even today I got, a, uh, I think, Twitter or some message by finance minister, everybody has to go for digital. Now, olden days are not here, now we can think of some shortcuts. Everybody has to think the importance of digital and full compliance of all government of India and government of Kalangana guidelines so that banks are very gung-ho. Banks feel no problem in financing to units because sometimes we want to give loans. Customers are very able customers. Customers are worthy customers in all respects, but sometimes papers are lacking and we can't, we are not able to give these loans due because certain papers are not available. So I will request all my friends who are sitting here to prove their real worth in their balance sheet so that bank, any bank does not feel any challenge in giving finance to my friends from MSME. Uh, through the digital initiatives such as Internet of uh, Things, 3D printing, artificial intelligence, blockchain, MSMEs have to move to the next level of technology ladder to stay competitive. Again, Government of India has also come out with various schemes for building MSMEs, such as establishment of technology center systems program for strengthening the technical capabilities of MSMEs, my MSME app for the various schemes of MSMEs, market promotion and development assistance, public procurement order, a scheme of fund for upgradation and regeneration of traditional industries, cluster development programs, which include setting up of common facility centers, support of market hubs, exhibition centers at prominent places, ETC. I believe 
with the above measures introduced by government of india and continued support extended msmes by the state of telangana there is no reason why msme segment will not face this challenge of pandemic or any other challenge and why they can't come with flying colors in the days to come with this i wish my best of luck to all people who are present here in this meeting uh, and again wish all of you a very happy diwali and all festivals thank you thank you so much sir thank you for your extensive focus on msme and supporting msme through your scheme now uh, next i would like to invite mr jun tang country head india international finance corporation to deliver the special address before over to you sir uh, mr we we just thank you for joining from washington dc even in the late, late at night thank you so much sir over to you I request you request you to unmute your microphone, sir. Uh, can I hear you now? Yes, yes, please. Thank you. Over to okay. you. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, first, I would like to thank the government of uh, Telangana and CII invite me to speak at this uh, important uh, MSME summit. I represent International Finance Corporation. We are part of the World Bank Group. India is IFC's single largest investment country. We have about six billion, six and a half billion dollars invested, uh, outstanding uh, investment in India. Uh, India is also IFC's largest advisory uh, client uh, of, uh, in the world. We have a special tie with uh, Telangana. Uh, we have invested in the more than a dozen uh, uh, companies uh, in in this uh, state. Uh, some of the names probably you 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 are familiar to you, like uh, uh, Sunivasa Poultry Farm, uh, Dodla Dairy, uh, Polycap, India Partners Fund and a number of uh, Telangana-based uh, MFIs. IFC supports MSMEs, mainly through our investment and advisory programs. We provide investment funding to retail financial institutions, such as uh, commercial banks, MBFCs, uh, equity and venture capital funds, and particularly uh, uh, microfinance institutions. And through then, on land to uh, MSMEs. In this regard, IC has invested about uh, uh, slightly over $3 billion in retail financial institutions to support uh, MSMEs. Uh, in the MFI factor, uh, microfinance institution factor, uh, IC invested the MFIs are now distributing uh, dispersing about half of the funds uh, in the microfinance sector. Um, we also provide advisory services. Uh, in the past, we call it technical assistance directly to SMEs. Uh, they are servicers and financiers, uh, as well as the uh, as well as the government agencies. Most of our equity investment in the MFI se uh, sector, for example, are uh, accompanied by advisories. Uh, the present uh, global pandemic has caused a severe economic dislocation. COVID, uh, a, a, a colleague of mine just wrote an article published. He's called this a COVID uh, heat-seeking missile that targets the poor and vulnerable. Uh, indeed, the MSME sector suffered disproportionately than any other sectors in this uh, pandemic. As per reports, the disruptions caused by COVID-19 pandemic has uh, impacted the MSME's earnings by 20 and up to 50%, and some of them even become 
uh, non-viable. Um, I am very touched to see so many great minds uh, coming together um, to try to solve this uh, truly global crisis. I'm honored to be uh, a, a, par a party to speak in such a August company. The MSME sector and its role in fighting the pandemic. At the IFC, we pay special attention to special uh, to small businesses because they are the engines of job creation and economic growth. India's uh, MSME sector, as many people already used this figure, that the contributes 30% of India's GDP, 40% of exports. Various uh, estimates suggest that there are 100. 50 to 180 million people are employed by 75 to 80 million MSMEs in India, uh, of which 100 million to 130 million are hired workers and 50 to 55 million are self-employed. Uh, a study uh, last year by CII found that uh, MSME had uh, created over 13 and a half million jobs annually for the past four, uh, each of the past four years. So SME really play a, a, a very important role in job creation, income generation in the economy. The COVID-19 pandemic has a severely impact MSME sector leading to loss of livelihood and jobs and that impact as uh, MSMEs has come through cancellation of uh, orders, uh, loss of uh, customers and clients, and supply chain disruptions, causing shortfall in their revenue. This cash flow shortage is worsened by constraints to accessing finance, potentially creating solvency solv 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 problems. The board-based loss of uh, cash flow has triggered a chain of uh, non-repayments throughout the economy, the, including the financial sector. Lockdown raised the questions on the very existence of many firms, primarily because of uh, these other firms that have a thin margin uh, cash cushion to wait out the crisis. Globally, the World Bank has estimated uh, that about 100 million people uh, would uh, fall into this uh, extreme poverty because of this pandemic, and about half of them uh, could come from, from, from Asia. The World Bank has also uh, pro projected that the Indian economy would uh, contract by 9.6% uh, in 2020. This is the largest contraction uh, one has ever seen in probably the last half century. ICS uh, supports uh, 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 MSMEs. At present, we're focusing on the pandemic relief uh, uh, through three major uh, approaches. Uh, first, our board in March approved $8 billion fast track facility in financing uh, uh, to help the company affected by the outbreak. Uh, so far, $4 billion has been uh, dispersed. I mean, to sustain businesses and preserve jobs among, uh, uh, during the pandemic. Our global health platform is helping address the severe shortage of medical supplies in uh, emerging markets by financing manufacturers of healthcare products, suppliers of uh, critical raw materials, and healthcare services providers, so they can expand the capacity for products and services to be delivered to their home market. Secondly, in India, IC uh, has uh, uh, committed the uh, uh, about $400 million uh, now uh, directly for the pandemic, uh, as a pandemic uh, response fund. Um, 
uh, in the last six months. Uh, uh, we estimated that more will be committed uh, uh, in the next six months. We are also working, uh, thirdly, uh, we are also working with the World Bank to strengthen the MSME ecosystem to combat the impact of the pandemic through the World Bank MSME Emergency Response Program and MSME Productivity Enhancement Program. Um, these programs will strengthen the liquidity position uh, of the uh, MSMEs and raise their productivity. And IFC's role is to, uh, uh, in this program is to raise funds uh, from the private sector to pass them to uh, MSMEs together with the funds provided by the government and the, uh, uh, and the World Bank. Once the virus, virus is under control and the economy enters into, a, uh, into recovery stages, IFC will assist the, the country uh, strategy uh, called the Build Back Better, BBB. Um, we will continue to implement uh, our long-term strategy that has uh, three uh, pillars. Uh, first one is inclusion, second is the productivity, and third one is uh, sustainability. All we do are around these uh, three pillars. Under our inclusion pillar, we want our funding to reach to at least 10 million out of the 75 million MSMEs, which is about uh, 13, 14% of the existing MSMEs. Uh, we particularly want to support the MSMEs that have a viable business model, that are profitable, that can pay their workers decent salaries uh, 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 to, to have a, a, a decent life. Uh, we want to make this type of uh, MSMEs the core of a modern, productive, profitable MSME sector for the future India. We are designing various types of uh, uh, special uh, purpose vehicles to strengthen, uh, to, to pass funds to them to strengthen their financial and liquidity positions. We will uh, provide the investment and advisory services also directly to individual firms that have a sufficient capacity to absorb capital to be able to fill in Telegana's uh, development gaps at the scale. We will continue to strengthen select commercial banks and other last mile financial institutions to channel funds from the private sector, foreign investors to MSMEs. We will continue to work closely with the union government and the state government and the World Bank and other uh, like-minded uh, partners to improve the enabling environment for a thriving MSME sector to come. If we all work together towards this uh, common objective, I'm confident that the clouds of the MSME sector will dissipate and the sky will turn sunny and blue again quickly. I'm confident that the Telegana will see a strong economic recovery soon, led by the MSME sector. I see it's ready to partner with all of you to contribute to Telegana's bright future. Um, I wish you all a uh, happy Diwali, and I wish uh, this uh, summit a, a great success. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your valuable address and also for your continued support for MSMEs through your various business models and investments. And special thanks for investing so much in Telangana. Thank you so much. Next, I would like to invite our inaugural speaker for the day, Mr. Jayesh Ranjan IAS, Principal Secretary, Industries and Commerce, IT and C Department, Government of Telangana. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, uh, fellow panelists. Greetings to members in the audience. 
I am uh, delighted that CII Telangana is organizing this very valuable summit focused on MSME and the theme of the summit itself is very informative. How do you bring the growth back amidst the changing uh, trade dynamics? So, I also would like to reiterate some of the points which uh, earlier speakers mentioned. Those are uh, very relevant points. We are uh, definitely seeing very significant signs of recovery, at least in our country. In India, the fact that economy is turning around, uh, evidence is very clear. There are multiple indicators. The way the manufacturing sector is uh, rebounding, the way GST collections have improved, the fact that uh, more and more unlock initiatives of the national government is uh, contributing to spurring the reopening of uh, industries, service sector, also encouraging the growth of economy. New investments are materializing. Some of the speakers pointed out about the new investment which have happened in Telangana in the last few months. So all these are very positive signs and uh, we should remain optimistic, of course, not to say or suggest in any way that the pandemic is completely behind us. New cases are still happening, of course, not in such large numbers that they used to happen, let us say, in April, May, June, etc. Cases are not zero and uh, definitely we need to remain on our guards. But the fact that economy has started positive signs of revival is a very, very welcome thing. And uh, definitely the opportunity for MSMEs to also start riding this economic revival is very strong. So I would like to make uh, three suggestions to CII and uh, particularly all the MSME members of CII on what they need to do at this point in time if they have to ensure that the revival also comes to their doorstep and they are able to make best use of it. So, as I said, again, some of the points which I'm going to speak of are not uh, are not very novel. I noticed that a few other speakers mentioned, mentioned them, but also uh, the fact that they are so important, therefore, I would like to reiterate them. The first point which I'd like to mention, which uh, Mr. Mishra from uh, State Bank of India also spoke about, is about the necessity for digital, digitalization. In fact, uh, it is one unanimous opinion across the world, not just here in Telangana or in India, but wherever you look at whichever part of the economy, whichever part of the geography that you are looking at, everyone is unanimous in their opinion that digitalization is going to play a very important role in this economic recovery. And uh, we must ensure that SMEs are equally capable and competent to participate in and benefit from this digitalization process. This is easier said than done. It is very easy to speak in a seminar like this and say that digitalize or make uh, make use of digitalization, but to convert it into action and uh, ensure that even the last MSME down the line is able to benefit from the digitalization process requires lots of effort. And uh, this is something which the government, of course, is planning to spearhead, will be spearheading, but we will require a very genuine sense of uh, partnership and collaboration in this. Of course, once on the one side, we have solution providers, digital uh, companies, technology companies who are definitely collaborating, participating. And since I'm also the IT secretary in the state, I, I know them well, I interact with them. And I know that their solutions and products are available for users in our state. But uh, as, the, as the saying goes, you can take a horse to water, but can you make it drink? So this is like the same situation. We do have an array of digital tools, etc. But how do you ensure that every MSME starts using them? And there is a plethora of tools, and many of these tools do not require any very high level of technology background or uh, very high level of education to adopt those tools. Men most of the tools are extremely affordable. They're user friendly and uh, they have given uh, proven results. So how does one ensure that uh, everyone is familiar with these tools? Most of the times I have, uh, what I have realized in my experience is that it is a mindset issue. Affordability, etc., is not the biggest uh, uh, block. The biggest block is in the way in which we think about technology. And most of the MSME owners, I notice, typically are from the older generation, their faith in technology or their their self-belief that they have the wherewithal or the competence to use technology is very limited. So how do you 
convince them to change their mindsets, change their attitudes, and make technology adoption very, very easy. Digital adoption very, very easy is a is a very important imperative. And uh, obviously, the number of uh, such people, which uh, remains pretty large across different verticals, can only be persuaded or convinced if they if we see a, some kind of a mass uh, effort towards that. Only when there is uh, some kind of a sufficient scale, if they see a large number of uh, users actually using and benefiting, their convictions also will start to change. And I see a tremendous role for uh, organizations like uh, CII to bring this uh, mantra of digitalization amongst the MSME members in particular. The second uh, point which I wanted to make is again uh, mentioned uh, earlier, and I would refer to it uh, right away. The necessity for uh, MSMEs to look at newer market opportunities. And Mr. Bhasin spoke about how e-commerce is a great platform in providing new opportunities, access to newer markets. And uh, he gave uh, concrete examples of uh, weavers from Koyala Gudam, MSME suppliers from Hyderabad. And he explained how just by joining the digital the e-commerce uh, platforms, their businesses have got a new push altogether. I completely agree with it that we now need to understand in what way consumer preferences, consumer uh, habits have changed due to this pandemic. And if you are in a particular sector where the change in con consumer preferences matters quite a lot, then definitely you have to start exploring newer markets and newer marketing channels. E-commerce is one. We also need to find out if we are competitive enough to to uh, participate in all the export opportunities which our country is growing up. And if you are, then how do you benefit from that uh, opportunity? And how do you ensure that your product is well tailored to, to participate in export markets? So identifying newer markets, newer marketing channels, using e-commerce platforms are definitely the need of the hour. And again, we also need to understand if MSMEs are attuned to these kind of things. While Mr. Abhatin gave uh, very promising examples, there are hundreds of others also who could have potentially benefited from all this, but have chose to stay away. To stay away meaning not deliberately, but maybe due to lack of opportunity, lack of awareness, and basically a self-motivation that let me try things which are uh, off the beaten track. The third very important message for uh, MSC member, members is the need for uh, cooperation amongst themselves. Pandemic has also brought lots of other disruptions. Consumer uh, preferences, consumer habits is one disruption, but there are other very uh, tangible disruptions in supply chain, in uh, uh, the very uh, manpower availability. We know that lots of uh, migrant laborers who used to work in large cities and particularly in industrial areas, their availability now is not so certain. Some have, of course, come back, but it is not clear whether everyone will come back. So definitely there is a need to look at some of these disruptions also and find quick solutions. And my experience suggests, and also some very good examples in the in the last phase of COVID, is on how industries can come together to tackle some of these problems. So I'll just give an example. Uh, suppose uh, you are in a sector in which there is a manpower shortage now. Now there are uh, many such sectors in which we used to get people from other states as migrant workers who are unfortunately not available anymore. Now, uh, one obvious solution to this is that can we transfer the same skills which other people used to possess and deliver in our state? Can we transfer the same skills in uh, people or uh, job seeking and candidates in our, uh, excuse me, in, in our region? So uh, uh, again, a very uh, obvious way of achieving it is to start uh, skill development programs, create skill development centers. And uh, we have started an initiative. I have not yet announced it publicly, but I'm uh, very happy to let everyone know that it is uh, giving very positive results, is to en encourage uh, industry associations, particularly MSME associations, to adopt uh, and work very closely with ITIs. As you know, industrial uh, uh, technology institutions, industrial training institutions, or ITIs as they are called, are uh, available in uh, a fairly decentralized manner. 
while they are there in hyderabad they are also there in uh, divisional headquarters mandal headquarters and uh, most of them have uh, very good uh, labs so if you want to teach some practical skill the equipment the basic labs they are available but of course uh, if the industry starts collaborating with these itis by telling them what exactly is their requirement how do you uh, produce, produce candidates with those kind of skill sets also give candidates uh, some opportunity to do internship etc the the nature of these IT, uh, itis will get a major facelift and they will also also become extremely relevant for our uh, industrial clusters so this is one activity which is uh, taking very positive shape lots of msme industry associations have come forward to adopt itis or collaborate uh, with itis and uh, uh, the number side i don't recall the exact numbers how many itis have been uh, taken up etc but the numbers are very significant and if we are able to do this for every industry cluster i mean that will be something very wonderful so the need is to now collaborate in these kind of things there could be supply chain problems also and if you are able to as a association or as a group encourage some local member of your uh, of your uh, vertical to start uh, looking at uh, raw material uh, delivery or uh, manufacturing some ancillaries etc which you require for your main uh, product then the supply line disruptions can also be minimized or completely overcome for the future so the need to collaborate amongst each other has never been stronger at any time uh, before you might have been competi competing with each other in normal circumstances but as we all understand these are different circumstances and therefore require a completely different way of thinking so these three suggestions about uh, msmes looking at uh, working with uh, uh, looking at uh, adopting more and more digitalization working at uh, identifying new markets and new marketing channels and collaborating and working with each other much more than ever before to help in uh, manpower to help in overcoming the manpower deficits overcoming uh, supply chain challenges and any other disruption their sectors have faced and i am very confident that, that if these three uh, lines of thought are uh, shared amongst msc members by a large industrial body like uh, cii and we get the buy in of more and more members the opportunity to get uh, very strong economic revival becomes uh, all the more stronger so i do hope that uh, other speakers later in the day also will think about all these uh, ideas and how to translate these ideas into action i look forward to getting uh, clear and precise recommendations from cii after the end of this summit on what we need to do together to move forward so once again grateful for inviting me and uh, good wishes to everyone uh, involved in this uh, event thank you very much Thank you so much, sir. It is always a privilege to hear you. Uh, next, I would like to invite Mr. A V S Reddy, convener C I A Telangana M S M E panel, and managing director of P D Technologies Private Limited to deliver the concluding remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Pratyusha. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before me, distinguished speakers in this session have touched upon several aspects concerning the MSMEs, which are uh, really current and need of the hour. I would like to add that exports also play a key role for industries and as well as the current country, uh, particularly under the under circumstances. And global trade relations in a constant movement, they actually keep shifting it, although the speed changes from time to time and uh, it's a different from a country to country, reason to reason. India has a significant opportunity to improve its trade balances with the ongoing shift in the global uh, trade dynamics. As you all know that the shift has been, uh, we've been significantly seeing for the last uh, few months, maybe six to seven months. And particularly the deterioration of the trade relationship between China and its major partners such as the uh, United States, Australia, and Japan. Uh, we also expect that most of the uh, the world's developed nations, including those in Europe, uh, will make an effort to reduce the dependence on China. Uh, it depends on the wherever applicable and diversify their, the supply base to the strategic reasons. MSMEs are expected to play a key role here, and they should be and explore the, all the opportunities that are currently available for the MSME. 
And it's very interesting that I'm very glad to note that uh, India's merchandise exports increased by 6% to 27.58 billion in September, in this month, in the last month of September. And uh, very interestingly, the imports declined by 19.6% to, to 221.86 billion in comparison with the last September in the 2019. So which is a very great initiative by the self-reliant India by the Prime Minister. And uh, I should feel that this should continue to benefit the country economy and the MSMEs in future as well. Today, we all know that COVID has a devastating, uh, uh, devastating effect on the industry. It is a good to note that many of the sectors have started covering, almost recovering the uh, situations. It has come to a close to a normal, I would say, if not totally normal. I hope it will come to a normal say, very soon and we start working in normal functions as we've been doing it before COVID. I thank uh, CJ Shanyangaru for his keynote address in the inaugural session. And you rightly expressed uh, the, that the economy is under revised and under revival, and it is going to be, uh, we can see the good changes in soon the industrial productivity and the development. And you rightly mentioned three points for MSMEs. Uh, digitalization is a very, very important uh, point uh, under the current scenario. And making use of digitalization is only the new normal. That's what we need to understand and we need to make, and we, we've taken your point well noted, sir, and we need to do a massive effort to know the MSME, to know this is the real new normal and in the future to go, and the business will develop it this way. And you also expose that uh, the export in the new market opportunities, again, it's an important subject, and cooperation among the industry, which is a, yes, it is virtually skill development, and the technology-wise, yes, it is important that we should have a cooperation with a lot of institutions which are developing the skills in the country and different reasons. I also thank Mr. Jun Zhang for joining from Washington, D.C. and addressing the session. Thank you for briefing about uh, international finance corporations operations, particularly for MSME in India. And uh, you've expressed uh, rightly three pillars uh, to improve the productivity, sustainability, and profitability. Yes, this is very important key uh, aspects for the MSME to uh, develop. Also, uh, very interesting to know that uh, the IFC is also willing to work with an MSME directly, and it's a very interesting thing. So we don't have to pass through via media, and it's uh, directly you are interesting to work with us. So we let our members, MSME members, know about this thing. And it's a late evening for you, and a rather late night for you, and thank you so much. Still, you have shown interest to be part of this session. I appreciate Mr. Jang. I thank Mr. Om Prakash Mishra for his special address on this session, and thank you for uh, uh, I mean, expressing the lot of schemes that are available for the MSMEs, uh, ongoing schemes and on COVID and uh, even otherwise, what are the schemes that are uh, available from the Bank of India and other banking sector. It's, a, it's interesting to us. And particularly, thank you, Mr. Pranav Bashan, that you have addressed a special uh, address for this session. And uh, we, I'm very happy to know that uh, you have a lot of fo Amazon has a focus on particularly in Indian operations. And it's very glad to know that you have opened the, your first ever center in Hyderabad out of USA. It's very interesting that the, it's, a, it's a promising. And as you know that today we all of us, when we want to buy something, and first choice is we go to the Google, we Google it. When we Google it, then the first thing comes in Amazon. So it's a, that's, that's the, 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 you know, the important role is being played uh, by the Amazon for uh, between the customer, I mean, between the buyer and the seller. So certainly in case, you know, Amazon want to help us in MSME, it's certainly a good uh, platform, then they should help us, uh, the, the Indian MSME. Uh, there are plenty of MSMEs. MSMEs has several products which are really good and international standards. You should come forward to help us uh, in Indian MSMEs. And I'm, I'm glad that you have been already helping the handicraft and geographical products. Particularly, we appreciate your support in developing the rural business community. We appreciate that. And interesting to know that uh, the, you also have a launch pad for the new business MSMEs, and I'm sure that we will make, make it appropriate to, uh, to our MSME members so that to make use of this system, and then probably we can have it separately session on this thing. And I thank uh, Mahesh Deshaiji for his uh, special address, and uh, you rightly point out that uh, its MSME is the largest employment provider, and it has about 40% of its share in exports. And you have... Uh, uh, I mean, you said, yes, it's a complementary system to the larger uh, companies, particularly, and uh, the cooperation between the large scale and then the MSME sector is very essential. And you also mentioned the, the, the cooperation 
between them, technology development and, res and research and development. Particularly, most of the MSME will not be able to spend their own funds on the research and development. But uh, as the government of India has several uh, the institutions which are under uh, the government is the director of uh, science and technology. So definitely we need to use of this thing, and this is the need of the hour. We need to propagate more on particularly the taking the technology to make the India self-reliant. And Samir Goyalji, thank you so much for uh, uh, giving us your uh, the introductory notes. And I especially thanks the banks and the uh, for the program, and then particularly they have. Uh, given us uh, some, you know, the support for this program, particularly Amazon, Getty, and Tata Telesystems. Last year, I thank all the delegates from the industry, academia, and government agencies present in this program, and without which this could not have been possible. And I wish the program a grand success. Thank you. Over to Pratish. Thank you so much, sir, for your concluding remarks. And next, we would like to move on to the next session, Empowering MSMEs, Building Competitiveness and Excellence in MSMEs. So this, I would like to invite the speak, uh, speakers for the session. Firstly, I would like to invite Mr. The session chairman, Jambit Patil, co-convener, CII Telangana MSME panel, and managing director, Sohum Sanskrit Private Limited. Mr. S.K. Saini, assistant director, MSME DI, Hyderabad. Ms. Aisha Ali Husseini, partner, Ernst & Young. Mr. Lakshmi Narsimha Murthy, founder and CEO, Nish B. Over to you, Mr. Amrit Patil, to take the session forward. Thank you. Uh, good morning to all, and welcome to panelists as well as attendees. Am I audible? Hello. Uh, yes, sir, you are. Yes. yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So, we are a bit late uh, by another 20 minutes, but uh, we'll try to cope up and uh, see that how we come back to the timeline. Uh, our the session first session uh, is about uh, building competitiveness and excellence in MSME and empowering MSME. This session discusses on the strategies and solutions to strengthen MSMEs by enhancing the capacity, quality, and standards, and bring manufacturing excellency to make them on par with the other global counterparts and competitors. This session also discusses on the technology, both manufacturing and digital, to bring quality productivity and efficiency in the current uh, scenario of COVID. As we all know, COVID has impacted a lot to MSME. We need to uh, get into very serious uh, talk about these uh, situations. So I, I would like, uh, without wasting much of time, I would like to uh, introduce uh, our first panelist, Mr. Sanjeev Kumar Saini, who is Assistant Director, MSME Development Institute, Hyderabad, under the Ministry of MSME, Government of India. He is dedicated towards offering a spectrum of services for the promotion and development of MSMEs and entrepreneurs in the state of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. Also a key member of the Enterprise Development Center, EDC, set up at MSME DI Hyderabad, inclined towards offering services in various domains to enterprises and aspiring entrepreneurs from the root level to establishment of the enterprise. Over to you, Mr. Sanjeev Kumar Saini. We will be taking 15 minutes. I hope we can finish in 15 minutes so that the Kumar Saini. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Amrit Patel and uh, the other eminent pan panelists who are there with us uh, this morning uh, to discuss on the various issues and various challenges being faced by the MSMEs. Other than that, uh, you know, uh, putting a focus on what are the technological developments, advancements, visualization, everything which has taken place in the recent past and, uh, you know, the post-COVID, pre-COVID situation and how MSMEs you know, what are the hand-holding measures being taken by the government, uh, government per se, the central government and the state government of uh, uh, Telangana, also on this stage. So that way, uh, we'll just uh, discuss a few things about that, that what has gone into and uh, how MSMEs, you know, they can be hand-holded further. Because we saw the situation COVID, where we saw so many sick industries coming up, so many things happened 
which were out of our hands at that time because all of a sudden this happened. But more or less, many things are in pipeline, many things are going on, how government is hand holding. So that way, I'll just, uh, you know, other than the what we have been hearing uh, at the summit, that uh, so many, uh, you know, expert speakers have already uh, told about uh, what are the things which are going on, how digital measures can be taken, how digital measures can be effective for the MSME. Other than that, some digitalization uh, measures which have happened and with the ministry, the government of India has taken about, other than what Mr. Jayesh Ranjan I has told about it, that how we can go ahead, how you know any e-commerce platforms can be made. So that way, some digitalization which have happened are related to uh, the registration. Most of you uh, must be aware of that. Uh, some uh, measures which have been taken by the government regarding change of definition of the MSME. Okay, how MSMEs, the purview of MSMEs, the broad scope of MSMEs have been increased by changing the definition where turnover has been included. You know, for classifying the MSME to be a micro, small or a medium enterprise. Earlier it was not there. So how that turnover has affected and you know, it has the broad domain of the MSMEs have been increased now. So this is one development which has been taken in the recent past. Other than that, you know, some other digital measures related to, uh, you know, champions. There is one control room called champions where the grievances are addressed in a digitalized way. And in a most, uh, you know, in a more effective manner, where a time-bound, uh, you know, grievance redressal mechanism have been put up by the government of India. So this is for the MSMEs to understand that there is the definition change. There is one uh, more thing which has come up, which is called Udyam registration. Uh, I know most of the MSMEs who are there with PII and other, you know, eminent organizations and the associations, uh, they must have come across that what are the changes which have taken place. But I'll just like to reiterate that uh, one more thing which has come up is the Udyam registration. Earlier we used to have Udyog Aadhaar Memorandum. So now the Udyam registration has come up which has included two, three government departments and uh, some more things are in picture related to income tax, related to GSCI, and a more clear and a you know competitive mechanism for the MSMEs have come up. So this is one more thing. The registration which has come up. I told you about the uh, champions control room. Again, one more measure which has been taken by the government. Now uh, coming up to more distribution platforms, I'll just put it in a nutshell that what are the things which have uh, you know which are there for the existing MSMEs. There are some platforms, digitalized platforms available like Samadhan, which is again a grievance reversal mechanism. Then we have Sambandh, okay, which is for connecting the public sector enterprises uh, for the public procurement policy. As you must be knowing that there is a mandate of all the public sector enterprises to procure a part of their procurement, around 25% from the MSCs, micro and small enterprises. So most of the MSMEs are not aware of this, that what are the platforms which are available, what are the benefits which are being provided by the government. So let me encourage this platform at least to tell them that there are some measures which are there, which are taken by the government. Then we have, there is some called Sampar, which we are we were talking about earlier, that there is one more platform called Sampar, which is, uh, you know, for connecting uh, the labor force, for connecting the skilled manpower as a, uh, uh, our uh, uh, panelists were talking about that the labor force, the skilled manpower is a problem which we have come across. All of a sudden we came to know about this thing when the COVID situation hampered us. That uh, there is a skilled force which is uh, available, which is required. Only thing is the connecting measure which is to be taken. So that way, uh, you know, this, there is one more platform like this available. Other than that, coming up to the competitive measures that how, you know, MSMEs can get back into the global value chain. And how we can, you know, how our how our products, services can be globally recognized. For that, there are so many things available. One of them is uh, called Z, zero defect, zero effect. So that way, this is nothing but to enhance the competitiveness and to give a value added certification to the MSME to come forward, get this certification done, and which will be recognized pan India, of course, and globally also, where at least, you know, their things, their uh, uh, their manufacturing output can be recognized globally. 
So these are uh, some of the initiatives other than the intellectual property rights, uh, which is again an untouched uh, thing by the MSME. They are not aware of that, or if they are aware of that, they are not aware of the subsidy. They are not about the component of, you know, the assistance which is provided by the government. So that way, there are so many things which are there. There are so many things. Some of the policies are being revised. Some are in pipeline. Some will come and force uh, with a very greater input and very greater. Things uh, for the MSMEs, uh, you know, which can be value added to get the MSMEs on board with the, you know, major companies, major stakeholders, and that way they can be assisted with. So, uh, we have so many things to speak uh, other than that, uh, how MSME, you know, the ministry <laughs> per se, the uh, central government, the ministry of MSME, the state government, uh, they are working in tandem with each other and they are. Uh, uh, there to help the MSMEs. Only thing is MSMEs are need to be aware of that. So I thank, uh, I'm thankful to CIA for arranging the summit, MSME summit, uh, so that at least MSMEs are in picture regarding the changes which are being taken, regarding the changes which have taken place in the recent past, which are being taken up by the government for the handholding measures and more or less inputs uh, from the CIA and other reputed organizations are very well required you know, to frame the policy, because we know uh, about the associations which are there with us, with us, which are linked with us. Other than that, there are so many MSMEs in the rural sector, in the semi-urban sector, which are little untouched. As uh, Mr. Jay Ranjan was talking about, that the ITIs are being linked. You know, the ITIs are being linked for some of the other measures, how the competitors, how the MSMEs, data units can take the benefits of these uh, ITAs which are located in every district. So that way, to reach the last mile possible, even the government is trying to do, you know, many things, many initiatives are being taken up and your inputs are valuable in this, your inputs are required in this. And only thing is getting in touch with them, getting the valuable input from the MSMEs and then associating for a greater good. So uh, these are uh, the things which are required. Uh, so I think uh, I'm taking more time in this, so that way I'll just uh, conclude this and uh, again congratulating, uh, you know, CIA and, and you know, uh, we want to associate with them as well so that, you know, it is ultimately uh, for the end good and the benefit of the MSN. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Saini. Uh, it was, a, in fact, a very eye-opening. Uh, discussion on the various schemes that government is initiated. In fact, uh, never in the history such a uh, the the quantity of schemes that has come in the effect than the last government the that is working so fine for the MSME. And as you rightly said, we we need to make our members aware of these schemes because otherwise uh, it will not be possible to bring the effect impact that we desire to bring it. Yes. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, rightly, we have, any question answers we can take up uh, later on at the end yeah, of the session. Yeah, yes, I, believe, I hope you are available till that time. Yes. I am uh, available till that time. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Saini. Uh, we'll go ahead. Uh, um, our next panelist is uh, Ms. Aisha Ali Husseini. Uh, she is a uh, partner with Erst and Young India in Hyderabad office and a part of the indirect tax practice. Uh, Aisha, has she has graduated in law from Nalsar University, Hyderabad. Aisha has over 15 years of experience in advising multinational and domestic companies on Indian indirect taxes. Aisha has functional expertise in various Indian indirect tax legislations and policies such as customs, foreign trade policy, excise, uh, service tax, and of course, now GST. Uh, Aisha has been involved in, on a wide range of assignments, including identification of indirect tax strategies and tax planning opportunities, tax advisory and compliances, as well as tax health checks, reviews, and diligence projects. Uh, we'll, uh, I, I'll request uh, Ms. Husseini to take 15 minutes for your uh, uh, speech. Uh, it's over to you, Ms. Hussaini. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, uh, CII, for this uh, opportunity. As uh, some of you may have recognized from my brief uh, profile, I'm not exactly an expert on the subject, uh, but I think uh, I found it useful uh, when we got the invite to join because I think, um, and I'll try and share some of that as we go down uh, line. Uh, and I think I echo Mr. Jayesh Ranjan's view and now Mr. Saini's view. Around uh, you know some of these are uh, 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 a lot of uh, you know mindset or approach or lack of awareness related issues, um, as we call it, and you know uh, that's something that uh, the sector really needs to uh, look into seriously. So on the subject of increasing competitiveness, right? MSMEs are you know widely recognized as a very very important contributor to the economies world around. Not just in India, but globally, they form a very, very high percentage of uh, sectors which contribute to GDP or to sustainable growth of an economy. From an India perspective, I think MSMEs have always been very, very central uh, from a, a, a policy focused standpoint. Whether it is state policies, whether it is central policies, uh, whether it is banking related policies, etc. They have always been, uh, uh, you know, a big focus. Uh, and, uh, you know, as uh, uh, we've discussed earlier and all of us are aware of, even earlier this year as part of the stimulus package, it was one of the largest uh, stimulus uh, for this sector and, you know, from a, uh, from a focus standpoint. Uh, and uh, some of the much needed reforms in the sense of, you know, threshold increase, uh, focus, et cetera, have been announced uh, uh, during this, uh, 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 you know, in the stimulus package. But I think uh, in the next few minutes, uh, what I want to really do is, uh, you know, because I see that the next session is lined up on more expert around policies, right? So in instead of uh, spending a lot of time on those uh, uh, policy standpoint, and I think I've got control, I just want to share one uh, slide. Is my slide um, visible? Yeah, visible. Okay. So I just wanted to, uh, you know, I just uh, uh, prepared this one uh, slide uh, in the in the run up or in the context of building uh, competitiveness. Uh, I have tried to summarize uh, in this slide, uh, and uh, some of these subjects are being dealt with in the later uh, sessions in detail around policy, finance, etc. So I'm not going to uh, spend time on that. But I thought it would be useful, as you know, we were one of the earlier speakers, uh, to just sort of uh, contextualize or try and uh, put the uh, put the you know the spectrum uh, in one place. So that then that can become a good uh, sort of talking uh, or at least a originating I a point from for all uh, ideas. So e while as I uh, you know said each of these topics are being covered, but I think uh, so I have listed them out. Access to finance I think continues to remain one of the most critical uh, aspects to be addressed uh, in order to increase uh, competitiveness. Uh, access to uh, infrastructure, I think uh, some of the uh, efforts uh, from a policy standpoint are there. I think I would like to spend some time on the third uh, bucket, which is on addressing com uh, competitive, you know, uh, gaps in uh, uh, in capabilities uh, um, while we talk about, uh, uh, you know, uh, building competitiveness. Uh, you know, as an advisor or as a consultant, um, on various occasions we have seen that uh, 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 strengthening business management or internal controls are something which come very, very, or become very, very key as we go, uh, as we go, uh, uh, you know, as companies or as MSMEs grow. So I think that is something that uh, MSMEs should focus on. Because uh, uh, the moment you uh, start taking leaps and bounds into the next, uh, 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 you know, sort of segment, uh, these become very, very critical and can actually cause, uh, uh, you know, something like, you know, it can wipe out profitabilities if not addressed uh, prop uh, properly. 
So I think that's something that I wanted to highlight that even, uh, you know, the large organizations, whether it is consulting or, you know, any, any organization or whether it is IT related, I think there is enough amount of products available in the market which are uh, uh, focused on the sector and which are priced affordably for the sector. Uh, and therefore, uh, companies should take advantage of uh, uh, these uh, uh, opportunities which are available. Uh, next, moving on to, I think, technology and innovation goes without saying that uh, I don't think there is, uh, there is a way out. Uh, and the pandemic has only made that very, very, uh, you know, uh, has impressed that uh, very, very strongly that um, whether it is the MSME sector or whether it is any other sector, uh, being away from technology and innovation is really not an option. It's only a question of time. The longer you take uh, to fall in line, the you know the uh, the later one will be uh, in the line, so to say. All right. So whether it is for internal controls or the point which was made by uh, Mr. Jayashankar again on uh, uh, you know taking to newer markets on the e-commerce front. Uh, I think whoever has been able to bring uh, e-commerce uh, to the doors uh, uh, fastest has been successful uh, in this pandemic, for example. And this is going to be the new normal. I don't think we ever see we, uh, uh, you know, even in the post-pandemic scenario, uh, we will ever see life going back to uh, what it was before, right? It's, it's like uh, there are these discussions about how world will be called as before 2020 and after 2020. Uh, so some of these aspects are something that, uh, you know, should become focus areas of, uh, of uh, uh, development. Uh, and this is also something which will help MSMEs compete on the global market because internationally, uh, um, you know, access to technology and innovation um, has been always uh, uh, considerably higher than how it is in India. I think uh, the next point which I have here is on R&D and training. And I, I mean, the point I wanted to make was around focus on people. I think people uh, are very central to any organization and therefore uh, there should be enough amount of, uh, uh, you know, focus or time spent on training and upskilling uh, people uh, towards the innovation, uh, new technology, or, uh, you know, becoming better managed as an organization. Uh, I will, uh, you know, leave the topic around finance and funding to some of the other experts uh, which are there on the panel. Um, I think that's what uh, uh, I wanted to share, uh, sir, this morning uh, uh, from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aisha, uh, for highlighting the the, the the steps that we need to take to make uh, MSME uh, competitive globally. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, your speech. I now move on to our next uh, panelist, uh, Mr. Lakshmi Narsimha Murthy, who is uh, uh, CEO of Nishbi. Uh, Lakshmi is the co-founder and uh, CEO of Nishbi Technology Techno Solutions, a niche provider of business consulting digital transformation services to manufacturing industries. Over the last two decades, he has worked with the large and small customers providing consulting and ERP and advanced policy planning and scheduling solutions to solve their business problems. He has worked across uh, different industry verticals of uh, manufacturing, high-tech electronics, and retail. He has uh, successfully grown his startup based, based out based out uh, of an apartment of a 50 plus employees organization in a span of five years, spreading across Asian, Middle East, and Europe. Currently, he is focusing on growth and, and transformation of niche bees for the next five years and launched uh, niche bee brains as a MSME focused digital transformation. To enable MSM to adopt new digital technologies for ex exponential growth, he has a keen interest on how digital technologies like Industry 4.0 will transform the traditional business models and increase growth and profitability for manufacturing industries. Lakshmi is an INSEED alumnus and executive learning coach for digital strategies 
and innovation programs at INSEED. He also completed program on exponential technologies offered by Singularity University. Uh, it's to you, Mr. Nathaniel Simamurthy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amrit. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me just share my screen. Uh, let me see. Uh, I hope I'm able to be able to see. Yes, you 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 are on the screen. Okay. Uh, are you screen as well? Yes. Uh, okay. It's very thank much visible. You. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amra. And uh, I would like to thank thank uh, CIA Telangana for the opportunity to talk about uh, how MSMEs go about their digital transmission. I feel privileged to be part of this uh, elite panel of uh, distinguished guests who will be speaking and who spoke before me as well. So uh, a brief about me. As uh, Mr. Amrit has explained, uh, I'm an NCR alumnus and I also work with uh, various customers in their formulating their digital strategy as well. And our journey as such started in Hyderabad more than 20 years back and we started NICHBIS about 10 years back. And during this last 10 years, we have worked with uh, various customers across uh, Asia and Middle East and uh, uh, Europe on various manufacturing industries as well, like Rolls Royce or uh, Siemens and uh, all through various industries. And uh, we provided uh, consulting from optimizing their business processes to you know, uh, scaling up their uh, operations in various uh, you know, manufacturing locations as such. And during this process, what we learned is that the customers and there is an abundance of technological initiatives, the pace with which it grows is basically outpacing the pace with which it can be adapted. So that is where we also got to understand that if the customer has the ability to purchase solutions and technology and everything, but then how to make better use of them for the business benefit, there is always a little bit of gap. And that made us thought, thought through that if we can make these people with the capability of uh, understanding technologies can be connected to the end customers, they can be of benefit. And that made us to launch niche brains in 2020, that is about a couple of months back, and we thought that it should be that we need to give it back to you know, our own uh, country. That's why we thought that we should focus on Indian MSMEs with digital transformation catching up in the last you know, few years. Uh, it will be imperative for them to adapt, but then still there is a you know, gap between them. So our objective is to bring in the digital transformation consultants who are experts in Industry 4.0 and Global Expansion Specialists, and then connect them to uh, manufacturing industries across across India so that they can adapt seamlessly the digital transformation. So that was what our uh, uh, portfolio of services includes as well. Now let me just start this session with uh, asking this question. I'm sure this is a meme that has been uh, very popular in the last uh, six months and if we can take five seconds to answer what do you think would be an answer for this, like who led digital transformation in your organization? This is like CEO, uh, CTO and uh, COVID-19. This is a kind of a joke that gets and if you think that uh, you know, this, uh, there is no guess, you know, there is no prizes for guessing, I'm sure every you know the joke says that it's COVID-19. But uh, if you really see, the transformation is not new as such. In last uh, four decades, we have gone through various versions of transformation from mechanization to mass production and computers and automation. And today we talk about cyber physical systems. Uh, digital technologies as such. And what uh, is important in these transformations are there are three common patterns that emerge. One is basically that it's a cost shock because as a man, there is a new transformation gets introduced. There is uh, there is uh, things become cheaper. The way the production happens also you know, improved with the technology. So the cost of production comes down. The production lead time comes down. The ability to reach newer markets also become uh, easy. So it becomes easy to uh, you know, affordable for people to buy. So cost there is a cost shock. The second pa pattern is that when these technologies and innovation comes up. There is a need for learning new skills, which means that shock on capabilities, those capabilities that were relevant prior to the transformation are no longer relevant today. And typically these things don't happen overnight. 
they develop over a period of few years and suddenly one day they get exploded. And all this results into the business models being changes and industry structure also changes with you know, end customers seeking new products which are better, cheaper and faster, which also requires changes in your supply chain, changes in your suppliers. And unless and until we think about that and then adapt to the changing needs, we will not, the uh, no industry will not be relevant to the, uh, as we go forward. And well, let's take a look at what are the ways of technologies that are impacting the MSMEs. We talk about mobile, big data, three building. So many technologies that can have an impact as we go forward uh, with MSMEs. But one simple, I thought that let me just, uh, one difference is that compared to the previous transformations and digital transformation, as we call it, previously the technology was complex. It takes a lot of time for the people to learn and adapt to their oh, environment as such. But today, this technology is no longer a complex technology is to be looked at more as an enabler, but the, what is to be important is to look at it from a business model or look at it from the building of competitive advantage for an organization. So I thought I will take a moment to share our experience of how we work with the customers to arrive at their solving their problem rather than so, giving them a solution and how a digital transformation can be of course by what I'll, I'll take an example of how we work with one of our clients so this customer is uh, basically based out of Italy and they ma uh, they manufacture burners and boilers which uh, they supply to a local uh, baking machines and they came and typically in Europe the challenge is always the availability of skilled workforce and what happens is that uh, the each minute counts for them so they came came to us and said that we have implemented so many solutions, but we still have a lot of productivity challenges and we want to measure the workforce efficiency as to how much time they spend on actual production and how much you know, we plan certain times and then there is always a gap in like this. So it's on, on, uh, at a high level, it looks a very simple you know, workforce efficiency solutions where you just need to track about you know, employee, how much time they spend uh, on actual production assets. But we thought that if a customer wants to go for a digital transformation, the, in, they should not be really looking at this kind of solving just an efficiency problem as to how they can build this competitive advantage. So what we did was that we brought in the stakeholders across the different departments, key stakeholders, and then we asked them a question. What will happen to you by not having employee efficiency not measured or what will happen if it you know, increases? And they came by bringing in all people to think once up and think about from a big picture point of view. We could realize that it's not just about the workforce efficiency, but also about the information logistics. The people will be wanting to have the right information as to what are the priorities and other aspects. And also uh, uh, needing to have the visibility of inventories and uh, with uh, you know, uh, work in progress status and other things as such. And also about the prioritization and also tra tracking about resources and tools. And finally, all this boils down to the salespeople also was talking about, see, we don't have any uh, information about what's happening in the production, what stage it is. So we only know that when it starts and then when it is going to be delivered. And finance talks about there are a lot of costs we get stuck, and unless they report into the uh, report into the system, we don't know it. So all these things are not just have an impact on just an efficiency, but the whole lot of things. So by understanding that from a strategic perspective, we could be able to provide them service, basically increase their productivity by 15% and also reduce the overall need for their paperwork by 95% and almost save like the you know, productive hours or increase their productive hours per operator by an hour. And at the end, they also are able to, the sales team able to look at their, uh, what is the stage of production it is, and then finance people also have, you know, had the access to the cost information with respect to work in process now. So by looking at not just solving by what the customer needed from an efficiency or a simple problem perspective, but rather looking at what problems that they actually face, we could be able to solve much bigger problem at the same kind of a cost. So what what changed that from a digital transformation to us, it gave us a perspective is that we need to look at it not from a technology centric or a solution centric, because it can always easy for us to go with the buzzword and then talk about uh, you know, going to a cloud or you know, going about uh, you know, uh, going into an ERP system. We are the last you know, mile connectivity, they are the system that's needed. 
But before that, if we can think about what is the jobs to be done, who are the people, and how we can increase the competitiveness, and that can give a robust solution and the coherent strategy for organizations to approach digital transformation. And so this, is, this is what the approach that we did. And it also needless to say why uh, the uh, stress on this approach is also there. From well, the fact that these are the few quotes I thought I will share it. One, one is that, uh, from an European Commission's Executive Vice, Vice President, Margaret Vestager. She talks about that there will be only two types of business. One that are already digital and then uh, there will be soon be digital. These are the two kinds of organization only will be existing. This is a very powerful uh, you know, uh, statement as to why people should be thinking about and it should be on priority of the, their business goals. The second one is Jeff Mills, uh, ex GCO. Like he talks about if you go, go to sleep and then get up in the next morning, you become a software company. These are a very powerful quotes. Talks about the importance of digital transformation, irrespective of what organization you are in, be it larger or smaller. And it also, as you say, it's, a, it's a very easy for us to take, uh, you know, get got, caught in the buzzwords like digital transformation. It needs to adapt our perish. These kind of things are very, you know, uh, talks about the urgency. But at the same time, it's also important that the preparation is key for digital transformation. It's about thinking about how you are going to, you know, talk about. It. It's not about what initiatives you are going to bring in, rather how you are going to approach. So taking time to diligently taking a small steps in digital transformation has a much higher chance of being successful. So how one can approach? This is important part which based on our experience we have formulated a process for how any organization including MSMEs which has task for resources can approach is that the first step is to scan the external environment. Think about the technologies or the digital things that is affecting them. It's not that everything affects and it also should not be thought in ice. They need to be thought in terms of how directly they can impact their uh, industry. The second one is also so as the current value chain, who are your customers and who are your suppliers and what are they talking about? Who are the new players are coming and how uh, is, are they talking about the reducing cost or are you talking about expansion or are they talking about new kinds of material being supplied? These can give perspective as to how your external environment is going to change. When you understand that, you need to to design a value proposition. This value proposition, there are various ways to think about it. One simple way is also to think about the drivers of willingness to pay for your end customers. So which are the drivers that can uh, help you, your customers to stick to you and they love those kind of uh, you know, features and uh, uh, advantages. And also, ultimately, you also need to think about what, how you can deliver those value proposition at a lesser cost. So that becomes your value proposition. So once you understand your external environment and then devise your value proposition, then you can launch your digital transformation based on the what are your capabilities available inside your organization and what capabilities need to be built along with the partnership model as well. So that is where you think about the specific initiative, be it cloud or big data or anything. So it's important that you do that kind of work. And in this kind of a digital transformation age, when you have to approach digital transformation, the organization need to develop five key capabilities. One is a relentless customer focus. The second one is about agility and learning. It's about doing the quick pilot and then learn about whether it works or not. Because digital transformation as all overall, it's also an emerging topic per se. There is no standards available. It will develop probably in the next five years. But then uh, unlike other transformation, we need to also adapt fast. So that ag being agile and learning and then adapting can help. The third one is being a software savvy. It's not that you need to become a software company like GE, but having the knowledge of what kind of a software can influence your decisions and your organization competitive advantage can go along with. The fourth one is also very critical because you cannot have all the skills being built in, in the organization. Who are the partners you need to co uh, collaborate? Who can help you in terms of building such competitive advantages? That's kind of a collaborative thinking process and capabilities need to be built. And the last one is very important, being ambidextrous, because you need to protect the core business, which is currently happening. At the same time, you need to also adapt as you for digital in the coming years. So protecting the core vis-a-vis -vis the adapting to the new technologies is very critical. Being ambidextrous is a key capabilities for you to go about it as well. So having said these things, when we analyze and when we look for it, 
MSME leaders, in our opinions, are innovative and growth hungry. We call in India as a jugad. So that's that's always the case. But where the challenges comes between the you know, strategic vision to the operation reality is that this, the biggest challenge is that interaction between these providers and seekers are lesser. And there is always you know, very less knowledge with respect to the digital technology and what can have those uh, impacts. So, and there is a coherent strategy does not exist for digital transformation. So, you might have certain small launched, and you might end up having an islands of automation. And finally, the access to the right experts who can give the right kind of an advice. So, you have the ideas, you have the necessary uh, thought process for your business, but having these four challenges can limit MSMEs to go for uh, full blown digital transformation as we embark in the next decade. And this is where we think that niche brains as a platform we have launched. Uh, we, our aim is to connect these millions of Indian MSMEs, manufacturing and other industries to connect with the digital transformation experts, be it from a strategic point of view and also from as we do the specific solution. But it all starts with this uh, digital, uh, the strategic thinking and then the diligent thinking as well. And this is also the fact that people should not be thinking about six months or one year to get their digital transformation initiatives being kicked off and then realizing of the values. But that Rather, the need can be that you have an idea, you already have certain thought process in place. So niche brain is the place where you can come and then engage with our uh, you know, mission experts, where uh, in short, most of consulting, it can raise one hour to engage. And we know that you might uh, engage with them only when you need it and how long you can need it. Initiatives can be from formulation of strategy or any operational initiatives or even with respect to customer engagements or a global expansion, and also upskilling and reskilling people for digital age. So various ways, it can be a question, or it can be a training, or it can be certain insights which you need to your specific organizational digital transformation initiatives. Niche brains can help you to connect to the right uh, transformation, to get your answers, to the answers in a short uh, uh, time period, and uh, your digital transformation journey. So with that as a note, we also want uh, you know, all the MSMEs who are present here, they can come and register with us. We also have this initiatives which we have launched. Uh, so uh, the uh, early adopters, a uh, few customers whom we are coming in, we can work with you closely and then provide you the free consulting on transforming healthy platform digital in the early stages of our uh, you know, current launch as well. So with that note, uh, I would uh, uh, thank Mr. Amrut for this, uh, giving this opportunity and then thanks, thanking you, the CAA. Thank you. Well, well uh, excellent uh, information on uh, digitalization of MSME. Mr. Murthy, I thank you, Mr. Okay. Murthy. Uh, yes, uh, right from morning, what we are discussing, MSME, how can we uh, bring them out of the, the difficulties that COVID has imposed on MSME? Uh, of course, uh, um, in the morning, when we were hearing Mr. Mishraji of SBI, as he truly said, there are a lot of uh, things have happened. Uh, there are so many industrial areas where we see a lot of sick uh, MSMEs, uh, uh, and uh, now a transformation is, of course, happening, happening from the side of government, happening from the side of uh, the industry and also the consultants who are working relentlessly to make this uh, uh, MSMEs aware of the new opportunities, new developments. Uh, the only the, the, the gap is the how we can uh, make MSME aware of these new developments and bring a new enthusiasm, a new motivation uh, in, the, in the, uh, the, the lot of uh, uh, MSME community. Uh, it, it was, in fact, a very eye-opening session by panelists, uh, uh, Mr. Sanjeev Kumar Saini, Ms. Aisa Husseini, and Mr. Lakshmi Narsimha Murthy. Uh, I, I have some more time. Of course, uh, our uh, allotted times are over, but still we can take one or two questions if, it is, uh, if these are there from attendees. Uh, well, uh, uh, if any questions are there, you can put forward through uh, chat or even directly unmute yourself and uh, pose the question to the panelist. 
uh, participants are requested to raise their hands so that we can unmute uh, the participants. Uh, I see Mr. Divakar Singh's name. Daniel requests you to unmute him. Mr. Divakar Singh, uh, you may please uh, ask your query. Mr. Divakar Singh, are you available? Sir, then uh, we, since uh, uh, we already passed 12, uh, then we, we, we shall uh, proceed to the next uh, session, sir. Okay, that's that's fine, very fine, Mr. Narendra. Uh, so I once again thank my co-panelists, uh, Mr. Saini, Ms. Husaini, and Mr. Lakshmi Narsimha Murthy for your active participation in the session and the very information that uh, MSME uh, uh, very important to MSME. Thank you very much, one and all. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thank Chief. you. Thank you very much, speakers. Uh, with this, now we move on to the next session: Understanding MSME Policies, Schemes, and Regulatory Support Assistance for MSMEs. May I now invite the chair of the session, Mr. Abhijit Jayanti, co-convener. CIA Telangana MSME panel and Managing Director, Simplicity Investment Corporation by Private Limited. We have the speakers, Ms. Rajni Thakur, Chief Economist and Head of Research, Financial Markets from RBL Bank, and Mr. Vipul Jain, Joint Vice President, Market Planner, Commercial Business from TransUnion Civil, and Mr. Subrato Bose, Executive Partner, Accounting and Business Support, Indirect Tax from ASA and Associates. Uh, over to you, Mr. Abhijit. Yeah, uh, thank you, Narendra. Uh, firstly, uh, I would like to thank each and every participant for joining us today. Uh, during this COVID times, uh, everyone in the industry is actually going through a rough time, uh, especially this is more applicable for the MSMEs. Uh, there are two aspects to it when, when we were discussing internally at CIA Telangana. I mean, what are the issues that MSME are facing right now? One is the cash flow issues. Uh, other is, is the sort of handholding they would need in terms of the policies, schemes, and the regulatory support. Uh, most of the MSMEs that we're talking about probably might not be having that wherewithal or the financial strength to seek right advice. Uh, and the, the other challenge, uh, principally in India, is we don't value advice. That's, that's another problem. Uh, these are the background uh, I mean, issues that actually brought us to understand that this probably would be a uh, good session for the participants because uh, it's not just the cash flows, but you need to understand the system well and also to understand how we can uh, work with it uh, so that it can help us and we can also grow as an MSME. Uh, with that background, I wish to welcome uh, our three panelists today, uh, Ms. Rajni uh, Thakur, who is the Chief uh, Economist and Head of Research for Financial Markets at uh, Ratnaka Bank. Uh, and then we have uh, Mr. Vipul Mahajan as well, uh, who is the Joint Vice President for Market Planner, uh, Commercial Businesses from TransUnion Civil. And we have uh, Subrato Bose, Executive Partner, ASA and Associates. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, so I request uh, uh, to start the session, we would request each of the panelists to uh, speak for a few minutes and then uh, we will uh, have a discussion and then we'll throw, throw this open for questions. Uh, I request uh, uh, Rajni Thakur to uh, please present a point on the topic that we are discussing, uh, her views, and then we will take it forward from there. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you uh, Mr. Abhijit. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Always a pleasure to connect with the whole NSME community, you know, especially because at the bank, we're very focused on this section. Um, for today's theme, you know, understanding policy schemes and regulatory support, I, I thought I'll 
step back a bit and you know kind of cover the key thought process behind the scheme because from where i look at it there was never a better time to be an msme in india whereas i do meet many of you all as clients and i kind of keep hearing lots of issues on policies or execution so you know, we will we'll try to cover all of it i'm hoping most of it gets covered in the day but from me from my perspective as an economist it was never a better time to be an msme in india so i'll take some time to kind of cover the key thought process changes and also to differentiate between how this has evolved uh, uh with covid i mean there was a whole structural thought process more policies towards big changes in the msme sector and then covid hit and of course then we went on to the keeping firms afloat you know kind of focusing on the working capital management cycle so the more short term focus for the post covid recovery is what i mean so let's take this uh, chronologically you know um and i think before i start it's fair to put in a disclaimer that i don't happen to have any political bias in fact uh, as an economist it's my job to remain as a political as possible at the same time um, i am also one of those who believes that you know these policies and thought process evolve over years if not decades so you know it kind of transcends any political or government lifestyle shelf life actually so with those disclaimer in place i think um, i'll start with the change in thought process that i have seen in policy making from in my earlier years as an economist to now uh, moving from a very social cause perspective to msmes they need support because they are small they need credit because they can't get credit assessment done to a growth engine for the economy and and that's a thought process change that has happened globally in india as well a little later than most of the developed economies but this whole policy perspective has changed because you no longer supporting msmes you know that when you are looking at growth when you are looking for uh, employment you depend on msmes to push that so and and hence my statement that there was no better time to be an msme in india you know uh, each of the policy pieces that you see is a culmination of this thought process of, of how this has evolved over time um being quoted as firm for the employment generation credit availability you name it if there is an issue and there is a policy intervention to make sure that that doesn't stay and in fact the basis of current regulation mostly comes from the whole comprehensive survey they did in 2015 16 of the total uh, msme world in india and there is a detailed analysis if some of you have seen the report in terms of how many units uh, around 11 crore employment 40% of manufacturing 30% of services so trade break up uh, services break up manufacturing break up state wise break up district wise break up there is a detailed analysis of the world available and most of the policy focus derives from that analysis so you know if there is something that that kind of misses between the policy understanding and what's on ground that you see i think uh, this report would be a good one to cover it but overall um, most of the policy instrument that you see reflects the agenda that's been laid out here and the second question once there is an understanding of the msme landscape comes from where do they think the policy intervention is needed and that's an involvement that has come from across the year any issues and i've seen since morning also many of them have been raised credit availability cost of business market reach training i mean you name it and the point of intervention has been identified there is a scheme that kind of covers you from uh the policy side to the actual msme side and makes it possible for you to avail there for credit for example all the collateral free loans assessments interest subvention scheme credit link subsidy there is plenty that i see as an economist is available uh, similarly on the cost of business side um patents regulation electricity so th- this is enough support is what i am trying to say here even in terms of market reach you know to the extent of um, bearing travel cost of some of these msmes to international fairs so they try to make sure that each of the discussions the issues that have come up or the point where policy intervention is possible there is a scheme now available on each of these um, certification patent 
most importantly um, in many of my discussions with the bank clients across the country it's been about either not knowing where are the policies what are the policies or some of the other grievances which is like oh this policy is there but there is this issue that that never gets addressed you know now in last couple of years you see active government outreach as well you know there's a gm portal for government procurement issues there's a thread portal for all the uh, delays in payment tracking champions portal for financial um, understanding or support there's samadhan portal for only grievance issues so this enough between governments it be in about the, the um, msme oriented uh, firms and the e governance uh, outreach that has come for you know for the msmes to reach out and a get an understanding of these policies b understand what is the point of intervention that is intended if there is a different point where there is an intervention needed um, again there is enough available and either e as a medium or direct me outreach both of them through you know forums like where we are talking today that's available and to end it all there's also an active exit policy that's kind of been laid out for msmes you know god forbid some business goes bad and you really want to fast track your exit from this business that's also available so from a policy perspective as i say yeah. my assessment is that the whole cycle has been covered the intention is to reach out and assist in any which way is possible not because they are small and need support to grow more because they are the key drivers of growth if they grow is when we as an economy grow if msmes grow is when employment happens if msmes grow is when income generation happens so you know the table has really turned in favor of msmes as far as the policy regulations are concerned um as far as uh, this whole post covid uh, part is concerned i think uh, it's important to keep in mind that this was an unprecedented challenge you know it, it took some time for everybody across the globe to understand what is the medical challenge and to kind of um, analyzing to its economic impact and we saw a bit of delay in indian policy support that came through but once the aatmanirbhar package was announced and you know once we had an a policy announcement it went through a season a very thought about seasonal change or phase wise change in policy submission the first one was towards the working capital towards making sure that there is no negative credit line issue that building up in the system the second was to understand how to re start this engine and the third phase that i see in the post covid intervention also is being coming back to the structural changes that i saw in the pre covid times you know in terms of labor law changes in terms of uh, agriculture farm sectors um, separate agro msme policy that's being discussed so overall um, i think um, again never a better time to be an msme as far as the policy focus is concerned in india in states at the district level one district one program so it's kind of getting down to the ground level to make sure that the msmes have whatever they need to stay successful because the economy needs them to be very very successful i think um, on a forum like this it's important to point out that there are few things that will help you use these policy initiatives in your favor a keep an eye on the lead sector that's been identified you know agro processing auto components mobile parts these are very dynamic sectors and they do keep changing in terms of policy focus as and when time comes but right now it's mobile parts telecom handset defense any msme with export potential textile clothing it services healthcare um, it looks like a very um, academic discussion in terms of identifying which are the lead sectors but when you are trying to figure out where is the policy support um, headed identifying government lead sector is very very important to keep an eye on where are the opportunities lying second i think one of the other important points that i would want to raise on a platform like this is please discuss raise any execution issues because the policy intention has been very clear to make it as smooth as possible to do business no this been enough loud and clear messaging on that so anything on various outreach programs that government has on platform like these on direct connect 
please just raise any execution issues. And on the financing part, um, I'm sure there have been panels here discussing how to access these financing options. But uh, the policy support is there. For those who feel policy support is not enough, there is a vibrant PEVC space now kind of looking at investing in this MSME space. And then, um, you know, there are these dedicated stock exchanges. There's so many financial developments happening as well, which I would really urge uh, the participants here to kind of look at. Because in a world where rates are ever low, in a world where liquidity is a flash, everybody is chasing yield. As long as you can create a positive value add in whichever field you are, in whichever geography you are, there will be enough and more credit available. So, you know, credit availability at this point, if there is an issue, it could only be a communication issue rather than actual credit availability issue. So that's something I would urge um, all of you all to kind of, you know, actively try to reach out and solve this. But um, I'll end back with the same thought that I started. Never a better time to be an MSME as far as the policy focus is concerned, in India especially. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kur. Thanks a lot. Um, I now invite uh, Mr. Vipul Mahajan, uh, who is with uh, TransUnion Civil Affairs. So thanks for having me here today, and I'm absolutely pleased to have uh, such a esteemed panel to have conversations about the MSME as a sector. And as Rajni uh, rightly put out, that no better time to be an MSME in India than now, and uh, so just a small brief background before I start building up on the point that a foundation that she has laid for the conversation. So I work with TransUnion Civil, that's the credit bureau in India, which uh, you know works not only in the consumer space, but also in the MSME space. Uh, I have been in the commercial lending space for quite some time now. Before that, I have been in analytics in most of the banks. So what I'm trying to say is that I come from a background of a lot of data, analytics, and numbers, and that's what I want to take forward in today's conversation. While uh, you know the foundation has been late saying that it's the most critical sector for the country, and uh, it's it's the one which is under the focus from all possible lenses. Uh, what, what's what's truly the numbers and what's truly the the fact of the matter actually looks like. So if you have to draw a waterfall, let's start from the fact that how many MSMEs in the country today operate. There is about 6.3 crores MSMEs in India today. That's the number shared by MSME ministry in, in one of their annual reports. Next uh, slide, if you want to do after that, is how, what's the impact that they have, a socioeconomic impact. And an absolutely great measure to measure socioeconomic impact is the jobs created. So about 11 crores jobs is these 6.3 MSMEs actually end up creating. Followed by that, what's the actual dollar that they bring to the table? So the GDP contribution being about 29% of the GDP. But uh, this is the number that I want to focus on, and that's that's the point that uh, Ms. Rajni was also making. This 29% GDP contribution, it's a stated goal of Government of India. They want to take it up to 50%. And if the contribution has to increase from 29% to 50%, think about the quantum jump that you know MSMEs have to make from the current uh, ecosystem that they operate in. So it's a it's a leapfrog jump. Now let's tie all of this. What does it mean for MSMEs and the support that they probably need from the financial services industry? Since most of us here uh, are are from the financial services background, and what's the support that we can extend back to the MSMEs? And for any support that financial services needs to extend back to an entity, or uh, is is when it's the point when they start looking at digital footprint. It's the point when they start looking at credible information about an MSME to be able to truly make decisions about it. So from from that perspective. Again, if you want to draw a waterfall only with very three simple numbers, the largest footprint that the MSMEs have in the country compared to 6.3 crore MSMEs, there are 8.1 crores current accounts in the country. So 8.1 crore current accounts of that next number is going to be slightly shocking to you. It's the fact that out of the 8.9 crores current accounts, there is only two crores MSMEs ever taken credit. So 2 crore MSMEs ever taken credit, 6.3 crore MSMEs and 8.1 crore 
current accounts. So you can see the scope of expansion of credit that exists in the market today. It's, it's huge. And some of the other MSMEs which might have found challenging to get credit from a formal lending ecosystem earlier, right now, there has never been a better time. I mean, and I will comment also also upon that that why right now is the best, uh, the best time to be in MSME. So, two crores MSMEs ever taken a credit, and if you tally that into the last waterfall number of about 1.2 crores GST registered MSME companies. So that GST registered companies of about 1.2 crores, they have the most rich and the credible set of information where your tax invoices are being filed, where the turnover information is being recorded at a very high velocity monthly basis. These information, all these sets of information, the credit footprint, the current accounts, the GST, is something that lenders truly rely upon when extending credit. So, it's something that you should leverage upon your banking and, and other services. Now, with that said, uh, you know, from what the ecosystem actually looks like, let's uh, look at certain interventions that came in into the, you know, uh, into the MSME as, as a whole, specifically this year. And as with one of the, you know, the title or the description of the session actually says, this year, if you start counting, probably will miss one or two regulations that have entered in the MSME ecosystem. There were multiple interventions. From the moment COVID hit us, from that moment onwards, first there was moratorium granted, then there was ECLGS scheme, which we all know by then also the name of Sri Karo scheme. Then there was a stressed MSME scheme, so the ones which are not covered in ECLGS, the less than, uh, you know, the uh, companies which have default more than 60 days past due, they were covered under stress MSME scheme. That got followed up by a restructuring guideline. If the borrower is still not able to pay, the lenders had the ability to restructure. And now at the last effect, we are standing at EGPS, the ex gratia payment of the compounding interest. Now, the point that I want to make, these are large set of interventions. If you start adding up their amounts, the quantum is very, very huge. And the number of MSMEs that it has touched is also very, very widespread. So this is the right time where there are a lot of interventions out there in the market, uh, you know, which uh, we can take advantage of as an MSME and and try to ensure that our business keeps, uh, you know, keeps growing forward. Now the the final point that I want to make before I move away from the topic of the regulation uh, regulatory intervention, this year is still not over. We are standing on 7th of November and it still has some time left. You can expect, I mean, we all know about probably second economic package coming anytime soon or something like that. There will be, I mean, I'm not sure for a matter of fact, but there can be certain additional interventions. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hampering this fact again and again. Please make use of those. Please make use of those interventions that are there out there in the market. If you haven't already done what we keep hearing from lenders that most of the demand is saturated, that they don't have enough demand coming back from MSMEs saying that MSMEs are not looking for any incremental credit. We have granted enough. I mean, that's one side of the story. You can hear the other side of the story today, but the matter of fact is if you haven't yet, please make use of them. So with that, I will come to the last point a uh, series of points that I want to make, then I can hand it back to Abhijit, is uh, let's, let's look at the MSME lending ecosystems, because that's an area where I uh, work primarily in, and it's useful for the audience to actually have a view of that. Today, the market of MSME lending is about 17 lakh crores. So to put that in perspective, 17 lakh crores is a very large number, but to put that in perspective, it's 15 percent, one five, 15 percent of all forms of credit given in the country, all forms of lending credit. This includes absolute large corporates all the way to 50,000 crore loans. This includes absolutely small borrowers as small as microfrance loan of 10,000 rupees. If you add all of that, the 17 lakh crores given to MSMEs is about 15%, 1.5. Again, a comparison with the GDP contribution, 29% GDP contribution, 15% spread contribution. There is a scope of expansion. You know, so credit towards MSMEs is, is uh, no doubt is going to get expanded. Second important point on MSME lending, 
the default rate and the delinquency in the MSME segments were rising slightly even pre-COVID. Post-COVID, we can all discuss and debate the numbers, how they're going to look like, but pre-COVID also the numbers were actually rising. So, why I'm say, mentioning this important fact is all these interventions that came in from the regulator and the government have provided a lot of pushing to the lenders to keep extending credit to MSN even though the delinquencies were high. So that, that's a good sign. Third good sign is even though the delinquencies were rising or whatever the numbers is, for MSME segments, the delinquencies are still far lower than the large corporates. So it's a proven fact that MSMEs behave better on their credit than the large corporates, at least on, on the NPA rate standpoint. And the last uh, two, three points that I want to make is that as Transunion Civil, we do this extensive research on MSME lending. It's freely available on our website, transunioncivil.com. There are two documents there, MSME Pulse and MSME Health Index. MSME Pulse is launched with SIGBI and Transunion Civil and uh, MSME Health Index is launched with Moscow Ministry of Statistical and Planning Implementation. The MSME Health Index, I want to quote here and I want to share two facts. Specifically about Telangana, since it, this is an event hosted by CIS Telangana. Telangana has been a best credit uh, from best state, one of the best state from credit perspective. The index value there, so the higher the better, on their credit matrix is about 99, whereas the country average is about 86. So from a country average of 86 to a 99, it's a it's a it's a big massive gap. So they are performing really well as a state on their MSME credit. But from a growth perspective, the credit infusion and the growth perspective, the again, the numbers are not similar and correlating. From a growth perspective, the market average, uh, the country average is about 103 and Telangana is only at 104. So there is a lot of scope of expansion even in the credit growth from Telangana. So with that, I think I will hand it back to Bujit and uh, with the last comment, please share your questions. Uh, we'll be happy to take them. Uh, Bujit, you are on mute. Oh, you are on mute. Uh, sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Marjan. I was mentioning after hearing you, I myself have a couple of questions. Uh, but I think I'm in most of the uh, part of it for some more. But we would get that. Uh, and uh, now I request Mr. Tubrupo Bose, Executive Partner, ASA Associates, to please. Uh, thank you, Abhijit. Let me share my screen. Yeah, now I've been near the presenter, so I can now share the screen. Uh, Okay, Abhijit, uh, Rajdi, Vipul, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes. And you can hear me also? Yes, we no. can see you. Yes. Great. Great. Yeah, yeah. Great. So, uh, thank you, uh, uh, CII Telangana, uh, uh, Narendra, uh, everybody for uh, us a chance to uh, speak at the MSME uh, conference, I would say. Uh, of course, in COVID times, we are uh, now meeting through a webinar. I know I, if it was a normal time, I would, would have been today in Hyderabad and speaking to you in front of uh, everybody uh, in, a, in a hall. Uh, so that's that. I'm supposed to host, uh, as has been introduced by Ajit. And uh, it was actually very heartening to listen to Rajini, uh, an economist to be so, so positive. Uh, I, I, I really want to thank her by informing so positive. And thank you. I'm not saying I'm not, uh, I listen very intensely to what she was saying. And she also made a disclaimer at the very beginning that uh, she is not speaking for anybody. But that's an uh, excellent uh, uh, presentation, so to say. I mean, uh, good. And then before, uh, to cast to a very different side of it. Uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a presenter, he brought a different. Uh, uh, picture as to what we should and six point of six point three MSMEs, uh, three crores MSMEs today in India. Yeah, and uh, uh, a lot of them who at least forty percent were not getting credit, also a very very uh, good 
thing to hear about it. So now I am a consultant. Uh, Rajini and Nipul has spoken it from a very uh, broad uh, perspective, but very incisive. Now as a consultant, I deal with uh, debit status accounts, uh, GST uh, and stuff like that, and audit and reporting and all those stuff. So therefore, I limit my presentation as advised by CII to we, uh, we, we in the COVID scenario, what are the regulatory support that we have? What are the laws uh, or the provisions in the law that has been brought out by the government, which you can uh, hear from me and then think about it and then ask questions uh, uh, come back to us. So I start the presentation. So first thing, uh, the, uh, the classification. Now, the classification is an uh, extremely, extremely broad classification. Uh, uh, we had earlier uh, micro, small, and medium uh, based on investment in large and machinery and equipment. Uh, a very minuscule part of the entire thing uh, uh, was there. You see, into investments or into the uh, the investment in plant and machinery or equipment, and manufacturing and uh, stuff. But there was a lot of confusion. With this revised classification, I think uh, the government has really brought in the Atmanirbhar uh, plan to fall, and uh, the government's plan of making in India uh, really, really should uh, uh, see the light of the day. And of course, Rajni, as the economist, has already given the light of the day to us. Now, uh, the revised classification is very interesting. The revised class classification doesn't distinguish between manufacturing and services. If this is notified to apply from 1st of July 2020, so we are already in it. The investment threshold for micro is uh, 10 million. Figures are all in Iowa. Turnover threshold is 50. Uh, for small enterprises, 100 million investment threshold and turnover is 500 million. And for medium enterprises, it is 500 million and 2,500 million. That turnover threshold. So, uh, if you see, to what it costs turnover, the medium enterprises uh, uh, can enjoy the benefits of MSME. So, really, really, uh, the government really needs from the MSME sector. Please remember. Uh, uh, that uh, MSME sector contributes to 50% of India's exports. That, I mean, if you look at Germany, uh, it gives great uh, uh, sort of importance to their MSME se sector because MSME sector is what drives the country. I mean, most advanced countries have huge MSME sectors with a lot of uh, uh, benefits given by the government. And now, uh, I think after a long, long time, the due recognition to the MSME has been given uh, with this new uh, uh, classification. Uh, I would not go into the procedural part of it, but yes, 1st of July, the registration, you have to read and still see where it uh, falls. And though the government has given a, a window, and then uh, you have all the time to change over and get a, a new classification as per the new uh, rules. Going to the next slide, uh, yeah. So, as I said, I'm a consultant, so I'll, I'll cover those, those uh, areas of uh, interest for uh, uh, the, 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 the MSME uh, uh, people who are sitting and listening to us on the compliance side. So, what was there in GST? So, the 5th of October meeting of the 42nd GST Council came about with the Part beating uh, 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 announcements. One was the quarterly fund for taxpayers with aggregate turnover of less than five crore. So first of January, so notifications will come in for that. Uh, for these, first of January, we are looking at quarterly filing for taxpayers up to five crore rupees. Right? This is a change, big change. A lot of hassles we have seen from the very first day when GST came. There were a lot of uh, problems for the small and micro uh, uh, sectors. But now the government has realized this, and therefore, for the, from the new year, we're looking at something uh, which is very encouraging for the sector. Now, HSN SSC goals in invoice, uh, once again, was a, was a huge area of attention. Now, there are 24 digits. It was in the location of the the GST. It was very clearly said that 4 million would be the, uh, uh, the HSN core, but then there was a lot of tinkering uh, uh, happening after that, and there was a lot of, lot of confusion. But now, they have very uh, clearly said from 1st April 2021, the HSN cores will be limited up to 4 digits for uh, the, the, the enterprises which have turnover up to rupees 50 million, which is quite broad. So that's a big uh, announcement once again on the GST side. 
Similarly, the uh, GST filing, they do get a filing by uh, quarterly filers. I mean, they come to you have the quarterly filings and all. Uh, is will be the 30th of the month. So, it was the 30th of the month. And why is it is so? Uh, I will come to that later. It's, it will be 13th of the month rather than 30th of the month uh, following the quarter. That's uh, to be uh, 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 sort of implemented 1st of January 2021. Then debit credit notes, uh, there was a huge problem. And now these are being dealing from the invoices. So you need not to have one-to-one -one correlation between invoices. You can uh, uh, you can enter your details in the in the return, in the history return. And the trading or details and debit or details, you don't have any correlation. So that is one thing which also was good, and this is already good. This is already limited uh, to the first of October. There is no uh, linking, direct linking with the invoices. Then, uh, very peculiar announcement. Why peculiar? I would say because they have brought in a provision wherein they say that quarterly tax payers, I mean, the payment of tax, uh, I mean, it's not quarterly tax payment, it is quarterly filing that uh, we are look looking at. but. They have said that within that quarterly filing, the people who pay tax on a monthly basis, they have to pay it in the first two months of the quarter instead of the net cash tax of the last quarter. They want to implement from 1st of January 2021. How this pans out and how you will fill the return, uh, uh, what, because when you fill the return, you have the actual data. And actual data, the actual tax will be calculated. And the actual tax is calculated and you pay the actual tax accordingly after setting off from the liability. But this 35% uh, uh, threshold, how uh, this will be implemented, the government definitely will come up with rules and regulations. Now, there are GST portal features which are also uh, recommended by the council uninsured uh, people. So we want to give an input compliance experience. The, the experience that we have for the last three years is not, uh, if I may say so, very, very smooth. There have been issues on the total. But they now want to give it a very, very uh, a, a simple experience, I would say, for anybody who want to use the portal and find their returns. So what are the things they are planning? So they are saying that the timely filing of the GSTR-1 is sufficient as return informed GSTR will be getting auto prepared. So first of January, they have the similar point of online. So it will be sufficient if you file this GSTR one, the GSTR C will be auto populated to the extent possible. This is from first of January. You need not to yet punch the numbers there. And GSTR C mind you is a uh, is, is this problem a uh, return. It takes time to fill in. And then the auto population of ITC from the suppliers GSTR 1 to the newly developed facility of GSTR 2B. As you all know, that the government has come out with a GSTR 2B facility, which is uh, nothing but the way itself, but the, it, it freezes for freezes for one taxpayer. It's very really dynamic. When you file the suppliers, file the GSTR 1. Uh, as in purchaser can see my uh, uh, to in my uh, portal the two way which is the suppliers filing details, but it is very dynamic. It can change any moment. Every hour, every minute can change as long as the supplier goes on filing the invoices they are sending to various uh, customers, including me. But this GSTR 2B is not dynamic. It will freeze for the tax period on a particular date, right? So your reconciliations. Which earlier was so, uh, used to go heavy, and I've been a consultant. I advise a lot of companies on reconciliations and do reconciliations. My team, uh, uh, and it becomes a, 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 a job now with this to be facility from 1st of January and 1st of uh, uh, April for monthly and quarterly filings accordingly. The, the government has given the facility that you can freeze the reconciliation for a particular month. Against your uh, uh, GSTR CV because the 2B is what you see from your supplier and the CV is what you fill and the 1 is what you fill. To reconcile the input tax credit which you see in 2B and the input tax credit vis a vis the invoices that you see from your supplier and the reconciliation can be simpler than before. Then again, the GST order is sold, they increased from the rupees 2 crore to 5 crore. This is a which helps them because GST order, mind you, uh, is a culmination of the final the GST annual return and then uh, commenting on that annual return through the audit certification. So the auditor has to certify the GSTR 9, the, all the reconciliations are in place and file the audit report. 
Now they have said that the limit for doing the GST orders has been increased from 2 crore to 5 crore, which was which is a very welcome step because a person uh, entity having 2 crore of uh, a turnover, I think we have to point to five. And with the lots of checks and balances out there, including following principles of uh, standard, standard auditing procedures of the ICI and the Government of India. So, therefore, this is a welcome step. This is already on from the financial year 1819. And then the mandatory filing of GSTR 1, once again, an announcement on the 42nd GST Council to arrive on the 1st of April 2021 that before you file the GSTR 3B, you have to mandatory file the GSTR 1. Right? And then uh, on the ease of compliance part, uh, what I think uh, the, uh, the new returns is that uh, when you remember uh, the government uh, was thinking of introducing uh, this year. From first, if they, uh, if they wanted to introduce from April, then we were hearing from September, we were hearing then December 2020. Now they have very clearly said that the old return system will continue from uh, up to, in fact, March 31, 2021. So anything on the new return uh, will come in from first of April. So MCB uh, sector need not to worry about uh, uh, the, the return system. Uh, nothing is happening for the next four five months. Okay. Other important tax provisions. These uh, provisions are to uh, GST and uh, uh, other indirect tax provisions, customs and FTP. So e-invoicing. Uh, of course, again, the government has said e-invoicing will apply only to companies which has turnover of more than 500 crore rupees. Uh, so, therefore, uh, MCB is out of the scope. Even with the device classification of 250 crore, uh, MCBs are out of the scope very easily. But uh, I, I, I must say that uh, it will not be long when they are out of the scope. And uh, sometimes they are putting on the limit to uh, 100. Uh, that's what they planned from the very beginning. But uh, this will happen pretty soon. 250 crores, of course, MCB medium uh, uh, enterprises will soon uh, come under the invoicing uh, umbrella. Of course, there are lower GST rates for uh, goods manufactured uh, under the MSME sector. We all know that. Uh, of course, the, uh, the composition scheme which is there uh, has been, uh, the, the, the threshold has been raised from 75 lakhs to uh, rupees 1.5 crore. That's a welcome step. Uh, those only a few uh, uh, can, 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 uh, can do it in fact, in the trading sector and yeah, the uh, service sector limitations. Uh, but yes, uh, you can do it. Uh, and delay in final return will now attract an HP of INR 500. So CGST 250 and the SAFC 250, the, uh, the late fee is 500. And there is no late fee if the tax liability is there. So if there is tax liability, then there is a late fee. Otherwise, there is no late fee. And of course, we know the SMS file of the returns and all the government has already done. So this, this is again an ease of doing business uh, for small taxpayers. And then the interhead transfer of tax. It was seen uh, during the last six years that by mistake you paid them. Uh, it was to be IGST, but it was a paid on CGST. And then one had to pay the uh, amount once again, the tax amount once again, and claim a refund of the wrong tax payment. Now you can change uh, uh, through the portal itself, and this is functional already. Uh, you can change if wrong payment has been done under wrong head, you can immediately change to the correct head. There's no need for going back. And we have done a lot of cases where we had to go to the department and give a refund. Uh, but this is now a big facility that is coming. Uh, of course, credit transfer, if suppose you have multiple registrations within the state, uh, 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 you can transfer the to the I think we have a drop in the video. Uh, Narendra, can you please check with him if, if the connection is still on? Abhijit, can you hear Yeah, yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. There was a drop okay, in the sorry, so I, Yeah, so I probably got lost for five, ten seconds, but I'm back. So I've come to the customs thing. Now, customs, we all know that. Uh, uh, the, the PDF uh, based uh, documentation is now on the copy of bill of entry.
Expedia pays the bank of charge for the bill of entry uh, for clearance on the import side. Uh, with errors can be corrected for faster clearances on the GST refund side. Provisional clearance of goods, uh, you don't have original certificate of agent, it's yet to come. The original yet to put the goods are uh, once cleared and you get the, uh, the original certificate of origin, you can then uh, uh, pay the final, uh, and do the final clearances and pay the final uh, uh, the duties and all and, and get, get. So basically, it's a, it's a early clearance that we talk about uh, without a valid document the government has. Uh, made it uh, clear that the clearance to the goods. Uh, uh, then, the, of course, in the COVID time, there were a lot of uh, PPE movements uh, which were uh, needed and report, uh, they, they had prioritized clearance from the government. Of course, personal hearing again, uh, we are seeing that uh, in, in customs, in GFT, uh, uh, in fact, it's more on direct tax uh, than in the than in direct tax, but we have seen direct taxes on the port side, uh, the personal hearing is happening to video conferencing. Uh, of course, we all know on the foreign trade policy, the foreign trade policy 1520 got extended for uh, one year. It was to expire on March 31, 2020. It got extended by one year due to the COVID situation. The government is trying to make the package to be more so in benefit. So you see large companies in each way are doing those compliances. They have the way to call them, so to say, the teams there. It will be, so to say, to, to manage it. But as you know, the MSMEs, uh, they needed a, a, a sort of package which could help them. And these provisions that I have put out on the indirect tax side definitely would uh, help the, uh, the MSME sector. Uh, going to the uh, direct tax provisions, I will touch upon briefly on them, mainly the issue of the MSME sector. Why? Because uh, you need to. Uh, uh, there's the, 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 the a lot of compliance. We all know there's tax audit, there's stat audit, there's the ADM to be heard, there's GST returns, we filed the GST audit, there's the GST annual return. I mean, you name it and it, it is there. There's a transfer pricing return if you have uh, associate enterprise transaction. Uh, uh, so, uh, so, so, so there are lots and lots of things. So the government extended the uh, dates uh, on many of them on income tax uh, side, and which gave a lot of relief to people. Uh, uh, added to that season also. Uh, and on the provisions on the income tax side, uh, uh, there are one of the very important uh, points is the payment option under specified mode for customers under section 216 of the If you have a B2B transaction, up to 95% of your turnover is B2B. Need not to give those added uh, uh, payment facilities uh, uh, to be your customers, uh, basically online payment facilities through PayU and uh, things like PPI and things like that. Of course, uh, there was in the beginning, the first three months of the June 30, uh, the government had reduced the uh, uh, tax, uh, delayed, uh, the interest on the delayed payment of tax from uh, 12 to 9 percent. So that was one. Uh, so basically, it was uh, from 1 percent to 0.75 percent a month. These are annual figures. And then the 26 AS uh, also uh, provides you n number of exhibition uh, uh, that uh, that you can use. So that is. That is one that the other. Uh, uh, of course, on the CDS side, the tax withholding side, the we have seen uh, this is applicable for the entire financial year. There will be a reduction on TDS rates by 25%. Uh, which is, I'll, I'll, I'll take five more minutes because there are a few things which I want to cover uh, on the other side of it. Uh, and but I'll, I'll breeze through, uh, not to worry, I'll breeze through. Uh, but you need to give me five, seven minutes mm -hmm. to uh, please cover them. Uh, companies Act provisions on the MSCB side, we, we know that 45 days payment cycle is there. If not, if uh, your the customers don't pay, they, 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 they report to them, and then they uh, will uh, Again, the IVC, the insolvency bankruptcy court, what the threshold limit for the cause was actually raised from rupees 1 lakh to rupees 1 crore. It's a huge uh, 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 raise uh, as to be, you can refer to uh, IBC. So, this actually helps the medium and uh, small and micro enterprises a lot because the threshold has also increased multiple times. Uh, of course, there are the MSME special insolvency resolution framework which will be announced. And of course, on the Indian side, we all know that the dates are about extended to December 31 from September 30. All those facilities that was given as a package by the government really would help the MSME sector. On the exchange 
financial side, the new gates for the creation of money on the import, I mean, it is the, the, the time limit between the big money uh, to, the, uh, to the country on the very low and export that's regulated by the RBI. That's got extended. Similarly, on import side, when the time limit to pay, that got extended. So these are huge features that the MSMEs uh, have benefited from. Uh, Liver law codes are uh, very, very important. I would briefly touch upon them just uh, in 45 seconds to a minute. Uh, four uh, law codes, uh, please remember these have been uh, gazetted and uh, also, but not implemented. So, gazetted notification is there, but not yet implemented. And probably implemented for 2021, uh, but it depends on the government when they want to do, but definitely from next year. A uh, few things that up to 300 employees. Uh, you have you hire this if you want to do a retrenchment earlier you want you had to take the permission of the government now uh, not needed even standing orders earlier you had to uh, 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 and, and go, I mean I mean have standing orders within uh, uh, your 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 factory or company if you have 100 employees now the threshold increases to 300 uh, employees uh, as regards the the uh, social security and the SI Act got uh, subsumed into the poor for social security. And the important part here is that RR number becomes the, becomes the identity proof uh, uh, document only if you have, you must have RR to get your uh, things done. Uh, and now, important point is people who are the big workers, who are uh, independent contractors, they are really considered as uh, employees and included the definition of employee. And even the definition of wages is kept similar for all courts. It was earlier, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, not to elaborate for all different for all uh, uh, the acts, but now it's being standardized. So, and still, you will determine factor in facing wages. There is nothing else that uh, will say that, that will uh, help in facing wages. So, that's one very important uh, the new labor court. And the last the uh, the Carlo reporting on the auditing side and the auditor side the uh, is the the, the, the uh, stack audit report. He also has to comment on the uh, on, on certain things, 20, 21, 25 questions. And one of the key things that have uh, the new change that has come in and it was delayed by one year again to help the uh, small and medium enterprises is the ever being of, of loans one has to now uh, uh, give details. Uh, the auditor, the stat auditor, has to uh, talk about uh, whether the company has taken any. Already, they have defaulted in payment of loans, and they have taken additional loans to uh, uh, to, to sort of. So that the auditor has to comment. Other than that, there's a lot of uh, uh, very very essential changes that have come in Baro, including this this is both lower complaints that the stat auditor has to report. Reporting how the internal auditors have looked at the account that is they have to report and stuff like that. And uh, uh, one last thing which I want to comment is and uh, very important for MSME sector uh, and fact it's for all companies uh, is that when you as a company prepare accounts for uh, your auditors, you need to have these five uh, things in mind because with the COVID situation, all these things have to be looked at, like the going concern assumption, like the impairment of assets, inventory write down to net reliable value, very important. Because you have to look into your balance output debt, and also revenue recognition, not to say, I mean, last but not least, revenue recognition has to be reassessed in such COVID times. I think with this, I have uh, presented a summary, a brief summary as to what the compliances people have to, our uh, industry friends have to look into. And uh, now I uh, close the presentation, leave it to Abhijit. Thank you, Thank you everyone for such an insightful discussion. Uh, oh, we, I, I, uh, Few questions. I would like to see if any of the participants have any of the questions that they would want to ask. If you can raise your hand, uh, we would we would probably give a connect um, If any of the participants have any questions. Right. I think I mean before we get to that, maybe I will have a couple of uh, questions uh, from the discussion that we have just had. Uh, one of the uh, usual observations we keep uh, see, uh, when we talk to different uh, MSME promoters is uh, there's a cascade effect. Not that uh, there is a regulatory effect on MSMEs directly, but that there is a cascade effect in the sense there are large enterprises which 
uh, which act as uh, uh, which which depend on MSMEs as an ecosystem. And they feed into the larger enterprises. So if there is any regulatory um, changes for the large corporate as well, that will have a cascade effect on the MSMEs. Uh, that is one point which I would like to see if uh, any of the panelists would like to touch upon. And uh, what is this, uh, as a trickle down effect, uh, the MSMEs are getting impacted because of this. At the same time, the sort of um, the regulatory support or the advisory that they would need at that level is the bare minimum. So, is there a way that we can look at it and maybe uh, see if there's a possible support that we can look at within the system or within the regulatory framework? If, if any of the panelists would like to take that question. Uh, 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 just a second. So, uh, which is the, the cascading effect? I didn't get it uh, fully as to what you were saying on. And what exactly are you touching upon on the cascading effect side? Uh, see, uh, the MSME, uh, in fact, if you see the 45 days, days payment cycle, the big companies have to uh, pay the MSMEs within those time limits. And I think, as a from the purely from the regulatory support angle, the government has uh, seen to it that the MSME is not affected. But on the cascading part of it, I didn't get it uh, right what you are uh, trying to say. So just, just briefly elaborate on that. Yeah, I probably will give you an example without taking me in. I mean, let's say there is a company which is actually having a production cycle of certain extended periods of time. Let's say because of the COVID uh, situation, they have downsized their uh, market expectation. So that that would mean that it would hit the vendors who are like MSMEs are trying to supply raw materials or supplying the car. So uh, quote unquote, I mean the large corporate would have cash reserves, would have their regulatory requirements, which would cascade down to impacting how these ecosystem MSMEs would reach. So direct intervention in terms of MSME support, yes, but this is something which is more like a that would that could be seen on the MSMEs. I, I would like to see if you could comment on that. That was the point of question. Uh, from my side, I would say that Steve would be probably uh, uh, the right person to comment it. From my side, I guess, uh, as of now, there's no direct support on that part. Uh, I understand back to back uh, when the orders freeze from for large companies, it will have a trickle effect. In fact, it's a trickle effect that comes in to the uh, uh, to the uh, to down under. So uh, that of course uh, will hit it. But then on the on the package side, economic package side, what the government uh, contemplates, so if there is already something, uh, that we would uh, be the right person to pass on that. Uh. Sure, in fact, uh, I was about to jump in. Uh, Mr. Moss has covered it, you know, in terms of policy support, that 45 days I think kind of conceptually covers. What you are talking about is demand slowdown. If, if the large corporate freeze, what do, do they pass it on to anything? Uh, we are essentially a part of an economic cycle. If that cycle is flowing, we all suffer as consumers, as individual, as salary getters, as business, as MSMEs, as large corporates. So that then implies that there is some, let's say, holistic approach towards trying to avoid that situation. But leaving that big picture aside, a cascading effect from a large business suffering and passing on to MSMEs because they just uh, order book and so forth versus large uh, business actually not passing on to MSMEs and probably just doing it themselves. So I'm trying to figure out the difference. I think it's the big demand picture that is being discussed here. And if that is the case, then all of us are trying to kind of come to a situation where the COVID is we kind of recover back. We have to a certain extent, but still around 10, 12 percent lower than pre-COVID level. And then there is a whole question of you know how much of growth do we see? Because it was second round impact. If the demand levels slow down, big corporates have a smaller order book. The MSMEs suffer. The income levels get down. Wages get down. And then in turn, the demand level becomes low. So that's a spiral that starts getting smaller and smaller, which there are all out efforts to make sure that doesn't happen. So, you know, everybody's aware that that will be a very negative spiral and they want to avoid it. So that's specifically for anything that's to make sure that the demand levels in the economy are continued. 
and hence you know the so the survival of it doesn't happen but specifically to i think 45 day cycle is what is expected to address any of the issues where you know the big corporates are giving but the small corporates are not or msmes are suffering if if that answer your question i'm not sure Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask another question to Mr. Mahajan. I mean, he was mentioning about the formal lending and the percentages that he was mentioning. So, I mean, when I asked this question, I think I think um, I asked this on behalf of most of the MSME participants as well. Uh, we keep hearing that the formal lending institutions have spoken about saturation in terms of credit demand from MSME, uh, but I'm sure most of the participants were on the I mean, on the event today might might not agree with that statement. Uh, which you rightly pointed out as well. So I would like to understand uh, how are we trying to like uh, look at uh, the factual information whether we have really hit that uh, saturation sweet spot and really take it on the face value that we did get to the saturation which was claimed. I mean, or maybe doubt. So I would like to hear on that. So I mean, there is some type of if. Uh, if uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Mr. Bose. I mean, if you can just mute your uh, thing, maybe that that would. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, I mean, from a saturation perspective, I want to share a few facts first. Let me share a few facts. I don't remember the exact numbers, but they'll give you a context. So uh, at Transunion Civil, we get to see lenders make credit inquiries when when you apply for a loan. The lender actually comes to us and wants to check the report of the borrower. So that's called a credit inquiry. With that, we have a, it's not a direct relation to a demand, but it is something closer to it. That somebody has walked onto a bank's doors and have applied for it. Those credit inquiries had a nose drop in the month of April and May, as soon as the lockdown, and I'm speaking only about MSME inquiries. In this case, no retail, nothing. They had a nose drop in the month of April and May. And the moment the month of June came in, and that's the month when ECLGS was full blown implemented. The Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative got announced, start, if I'm not wrong, around 14th of May. Around 27th of May or something, ECLGS guidelines were released. Banks were getting equipped in the three, four days. First of all, let me compliment all the lenders of the country who have worked really hard during these times. Probably they don't get classified as the ones who are frontline workers, but they are the ones which are one of the true frontline workers. So the moment that those announcements came in, they worked overnight to get themselves ready. And the June month was the month when the PCL years was full bloom. You will not believe the credit inquiries for the month of June were something like three times of February. Three times of February. So that gives you a, a, a perspective of how many people were looking for credit and probably were not uh, getting it during due to some certain challenges. So three times, not certain percentage jumps. Okay. Now we have seen that stabilizing to pre-COVID levels. Again, pre-COVID means Jan Feb of this year. No, no last year's benchmark. So this year's of Jan Feb, they have kind of stabilized. So the month of September, October have seen about equal amount of inquiries coming in as much as junk is coming in. Now, the, but another way to look at the uh, same thing is the 3 lakh crore that was announced, the deadline of that was 31st October. Okay, now the deadline has been extended till 30th of November. Now, of the 3 lakh crore, only 2 lakh crore got exhausted. So there is 1 lakh crore still sitting, I mean, which has not been disbursed. And the classic answers that most of the lenders, you will hear them talking in different forums, is that there are no more customers looking for credit. Now, uh, you know, for that, so out of the three, and, and this three lakh crore was originally signed up for MSME, then it got expanded from an MSME definition to up to 50 crore, then individuals got added, so the theme has just got expanded, but still not fully exhausted. Uh, so why? I mean, when, when we saw certain immediate jump, my understanding is, and that's the point that I want to leave the participants with, lot, lots and lots of MSMEs and lots and lots of uh, credit borrowers felt something like, why to take an incremental credit in current times? 
when I can manage my operations with the line that I already have. That was probably one of the reasons why certain, I mean, and there is certain proof of it also. We have a credit score called civil MSME rank. So one is the best and 10 is the worst. It's a rank from one to 10. Just like a civil score you might have heard of 700, 800. So since it's a rank, the lower number is the best. So the CMR one, two, three, have we, we are still underway and doing certain analysis, but these are very early numbers looks to have taken lesser amount of the credit during these times. So these are the good borrowers. These are genuinely those borrowers who have been maintaining healthy credit behavior. They are the ones probably which were also not so stressed. They were structurally strong even pre-COVID. So structurally strong MSME might have felt that right now is not the need to get that incremental credit, such difficult times, what will I do with the incremental credit? But another perspective to put at it, you can also think of it something like a capital infusion in your company right now. Every stress and a pandemic brings an opportunity. If you treat it that way and we need to expand in an exponential format, credit is the best form to expand. You know, credit doesn't dive into your equity, doesn't dilute that. It's a direct and especially ECLGS, 100% credit guarantee, first one year moratorium. So many, you know, it's like those offers that we get on many of those, uh, you know, shopping websites. It's similar in case of credit. So many tick, 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 backed by government, still not taken enough. So that's my comment on the demand kind of feeling saturated. My hypothesis, it's purely my hypothesis, it's those structurally strong good borrowers, which are the ones which are probably shying away from taking incremental credit, are the ones which can look at it as an opportunity to grow forward. Thank you. Uh, any of the participants have any questions that, uh, for the panelists? Please raise your hand. I see Mr. Firo's name. Uh, Daniel request you to unmute him. No, I think he's on mute. He's not getting unmuted. Yeah. Uh, hi. Are you able to hear me? Yes, Mr. Firoz. Yeah. yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I had just uh, uh, posted my, uh, you know, thoughts. Uh, I mean, when you supply to PSUs and DPSUs, uh, you know, along with the supply, they ask for a SDB, the Security Deposit Bank Guarantee of 10%. And also, you're required to, you know, show proof of uh, data before uh, the payment is released. And uh, the statutory uh, time is 45 days, but it barely takes uh, 60 days plus. So, uh, I mean, uh, see this, in effect, you know, you are uh, funding up to 128%. I mean, I'm taking GST at 18%. So this stresses the, uh, you know, MSMEs. If uh, something on the uh, SDBG or uh, the uh, GST could be done, I think that would be very helpful. Because invariably, uh, the payment in 45 days is never realized. I'm sure uh, if you check uh, with any MSME, they will vouch for that. There would be some issue or the other at many points. Uh, uh, Can I take that? Yeah, yeah, please. So, Mr. Kiraz, what you have raised is something that actually uh, many MSMEs have raised. I'm, I'm aware of uh, uh, both GST council meetings. There are two issues that you've raised here. A, the 45-day invariably moves on to a 60 or maybe 70 days as well. Um, heard of instances yes. of 75 as well, some of my clients mentioning that. Uh, the second right. that you have uh, talked about is in terms of effective funding moving up to a 128% because of high GST rate. Now, both of these yes. issues actually have been raised. I would urge you to kind of speak to your local um, uh, industry platform as well and kind of uh, get to it. Last week, there was a GST meeting on a similar complaint that has come through various chapters. Uh, 
um the 45 day is getting gradually is getting pushed very very strictly so i i see some more policy um, instructions coming through to make sure that it stays on 45 days so that is one thing that they are very particular about the gst uh, issue i haven't uh, really seen any kind of a consensus but there is plenty of demand that you know that 18% makes it very very costly for uh, msmes to fund so that's something i don't see any uh, let's say light at the end of tunnel yet but it's being discussed the 45 day extending to a 60 day to 70 day is something i see vanishing within let's say 30 days because there should be some instructions coming soon it's been uh discussed widely a uh, couple of ministry level discussions that have happened lots of chapters of i think kiki and ci have taken it up as well and i would urge you to kind of you know raise it again and again through your industry platforms there are all the intentions of addressing it making sure that that 45 day doesn't um, extend to a 60 or 75 days as well as some people have said i would just like to add what rajni uh, said ma'am uh, uh, mr philos uh, Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, no, I, I was just, uh, you know, also I wanted to add the, uh, you know, ten percent upfront security deposit bank guarantee uh, before, uh, you know, if the CP you are supposed to, uh, you know, make a ten percent SBBG, which later gets converted to PBG. So this also adds, uh, you know, stress to the MSFA. So it's a very analytical understanding, actually. I would really urge you to kind of make a case and put it through your local CI chapter. It's been taken and it should be sorted very quickly. Yeah, and just to add on the uh, to that the GST thing, uh, GST, Mr. Pirod is on a global basis. So, supplies to government sector or private sector, you raise the invoice, you pay the GST. But what is a uh, typical of the government sector we have seen pre gst also in the service tax regime that they ensure that you pay it first which we want to do i mean if msm does it they have to do it as a law because they can't find the return then I mean, if you don't find the return your uh, registration is cancelled so yes they insist that you show the chalan of service tax or gst and then they will bring us back the same is the case for some cases we handle project offices the same is the case for tds they have we have to show that this has been done and therefore they will so so it's just a, it's a lot of things uh, that are there uh, on on government but as that the clear pointed out this payment of gst upfront for supplies to the government sector can be looked at as a policy initiative from the government side to give some kind of benefit so so because the payment is getting extended from 45 to 60 70 or whatever it may so i think that can be looked at and i think uh, said that this is probably being considered Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any further questions? Uh, it seems there are no questions, sir. Uh, as we, yeah, running a little late, we can. Yeah. Uh, actually, I would like to thank all the panelists for joining us today. I mean, it has been such an insightful and interactive session. Uh, I hope all the participants would have learned one or two things which probably they did not know already. And uh, thanks for such an insightful session again. Thanks a lot for taking time out, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, speakers, for uh, giving more insights on MSME policy schemes and the regulatory issues. And uh, next, we now move on to the next technical session: uh, finance options and planning for a. sustainable business managing cash flows and liquidity crunch may I now invite the chair of the session dr yaram raju advisor telangana industrial health clinic limited and government of telangana and mr sanjay jain general manager sidbi mr balbim vaidya assistant general manager okay. and mr neeraj kumar product head msme from muthut finkor limited uh, yaram raju sir over to you Okay. We have we are only two members speaking here. Are others to join? Yes, sir. We have all the three speakers, sir, with us. Okay. Fine. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon to all of you, and uh, let me thank the CII and the government for this opportunity to share this important session. 
a uh, lot of discussions uh, have happened uh, during the entire uh, proceedings and the impression is that the ecosystem is definitely improving and a lot of regulations are also coming in for helping the industry particularly msme then why is it that most of the msmes are not able to really access credit because this access to credit has proved to be the Achilles heel. Despite all the schemes that banks speak of and uh, the government uh, also speaks of, like the 59 minute loan uh, and whatnot, uh, you know, Mudra loans, there, are, there is a host of uh, schemes that really this are expected to facilitate the MSMEs in a large way. Then we also see there is uh, a vacuum when we go and see the actual units that have been uh, reported as financed with uh, the units that are actually on the ground. This being the position, uh, the 15% uh, of, of the total volume of credit is being met by the institutions and the 29% of the GDP they share, and if this 29% has to go up to 50%, then will the credit move up to 30% as a proportion, is the biggest, is the biggest question. And with the banks now telling that the saturation has reached, uh, do you think that 30% uh, can be reached? This is one concern that I have when I chair the panel. The other thing is, that the, there is a change in the definition. This change in the definition, if you look at, they have now put a proportion of investment to the turnover. This is, if one crore of rupees is invested, the turnover should be five crores. If uh, 10 crores is invested, it should be 50 crores. 50 crores is invested, it should be 250 crores. So the sectoral definitions uh, that have uh, been uh, now scaled up is good for one thing that the micro will have to scale up their operations to this particular level. Similarly, small will have to scale up to meet this definition standards. And even the uh, medium has to really move up. It, it is perhaps possible for the small and medium to reach out these targets. But I doubt whether a crore of rupees investment you will find on ground uh, to reflect a turnover of uh, five crores. Uh, this is one concern that needs to be addressed. Uh, and when it comes to the question of access to credit, you know, naturally when the banks apply this type of principle, perhaps many of the micro enterprises would be qualified for credit. So what is the proportion to which they can go is one question. Then you can always persuade the enterprise to scale up their operations and reach the targeted turnover levels. Uh, when we look at uh, the Atman Labor Abhyan uh, scheme, scheme two, it is targeted to the NPS and the uh, you know, substandard assets. Uh, you will notice that uh, the movement of uh, credit has been extremely, extremely slow very minuscule of the operation has taken place in this window. And economic restructuring followed by financial regulation uh, has really brought in its way the need for a change in the very mindset of credit value. Uh, inclusion of liquidity, uh, when you look at, <clears throat> inclusion of liquidity has uh, strengthened the confidence in depositors. Particularly during the pandemic times, if you look at the quantum of liquidity that has been pumped into the financial system, has really put more confidence in the depositors than the borrowers. And banks do not lose any opportunity to announce their apparent intentions and their affection to the MSME sector. But when it comes to the ground reality, we notice that uh, there is a lot of gap. 
and there is an information asymmetry which really comes in the way of extending financial support to MSMEs. Information that the banks have about MSMEs uh, and the MSMEs have about the banks, there is a big, big gap. Uh, for example, MSA, that for example, so SBI said that 53 centers have been dedicated for SME trading. And whether the centers have been notified and whether the clientele is aware of, prospective clientele and existing clientele are aware of this particular uh, scheme of uh, extending uh, exclusive credit in the SAB window. Uh, this is a big question mark. Then when we have uh, seen the most enticing schemes uh, under this Atman Edward, even scheme one reach only the uh, only 55% out of the sanction 60% in terms of disbursements. And this incremented rate of 20% working capital to the pandemic struck standard assets in the SME sector um, should have been should have pushed really many SMEs out of the uh, problems. And those who are on the brink of becoming a uh, NPAs would have really uh, not uh, touched that uh, portal. Uh, so regarding the second scheme, you know, once bitten, twice shy is the approach of the bank because they already have moved the NPAs out of their uh, portals into special windows. And that means there may be there may be a special, uh, you know, assets. Uh, Power branch or SAM branch, stress assist branches. And once it moves out of the branch to a particular other window where the controllers are different for both the windows, it is very difficult to call back the viable NPAs and also make an assessment of the viability. The other end also is not possible. Therefore, once it is declared an NPA, it is done uh, so far as the operating units are concerned. That is one of the reasons why. This particular scheme is not, you know, uh, pushing its hand. The other is, is uh, so far as the substandard assets are concerned, uh, you know, they, they can really be uh, pushed out uh, of the window. And, and uh, the NPS can, they need not touch the portal of mana that. Uh, uh, that position uh, in terms of the disbursement was a sad aspect of the story. Uh, but after, after uh, so many years, I would say, uh, access to credit, easy access to credit, continues to be a major issue. And prior to sector guidelines recently have uh, facilitated uh, in some way backward districts have identified and they wanted the practice of lending to be pushed in those backward districts as it is the 50 centers which corner about 80 percent of the total credit in the country and this is one thing that needs to be kept in mind when we are discussing about the msmes as many as so far as telangana is concerned as many as 8435 msme units have commenced their operations since formation of the state with an investment of about 11,487 crores. And since January 2015, MSMEs have provided additional employment opportunities to approximately 159 lakh persons. While micro industries account for approximately 58.07% of the total units, their share of investment in employment generation is comparatively less, 7.92%, and 30.12% respectively. The small units account for 63.44% of total MSME investment and the 55.41% of the total MSME employment. The highest for both the categories. You are all aware that uh, Telangana is the only state to have set up a separate institution to revive and restructure the manufacture of micro and small enterprises. I can tell Uh, I can tell you just uh, very briefly a couple of case studies uh, where you will find that uh, revival and restructuring could really help the units. Uh, one second uh, polymers uh, is there uh, in Nagpur district. 
this particular uh, institution has borrowed from the grants from the SFC for the term lending requirements. And when they when they had tried to get the machinery, it got delayed, and that has postponed their commercial operations. In addition to that, they also noticed that one machine is inadequate to reach the projections that they have to given. That means that they draw in the technical analysis of the project upfront. This is what we noticed, and he has uh, uh, made his uh, second machine by borrowing from friends and relatives and after all after installation of both the machines a cyclone struck and the sheds have got damage and machinery also got damage and he had to incur a lot of expenditure to uh, restart the entire unit and it's a export oriented unit uh, it is uh, uh, you know <coughs> uh, engaged in uh, uh, Mining industry mostly. Uh, 6.2 million uh, is the 6.2 million is the amount that uh, they have set up and requirement of working capital, which has not been arranged upfront when uh, the term loan has been sanctioned. Therefore, they have got machinery on hand, they have got every our work orders on hand, but they did not get the capital working capital uh, from any. And on the top of it, by the time they started commercial operations, SFC asset has become has been tending to become NPA. They gave notice to the unit telling that they will be proceeding against the unit's collateral security. At this point of time, we landed on us uh, for a profit guidance. And we have uh, seen the entire position. And we noticed that the, we can give a <clears throat> Credit uh, gap funding. Now that uh, particular amount, amounting to 20% of the requirement of the person, he said it will be very easy for him to come out of the NPA status from the SFC. And we immediately sanctioned 20 lakhs on 1st October 2019. Uh, and he came out of the woods, and all the stress is gone. And he was able to he was able to think coolly about the market opportunities and proceed forward uh, with his uh, capital. Then you have uh, <coughs> the in a, in a, his uh, capacity utilization has also improved suddenly. Excepting for the period of COVID, he was able to really make the. Uh, uh, So both ends speed and also make a little more profit. With the result, he got a tremendous amount of confidence. In a similar uh, situation, uh, one slave exercise, uh, a sole proprietary unit, in a small means, and uh, he has party power looms, and he was finding short of working capital, and he also has heavy debt with SFC. With uh, paying 17%. So, when we came to inquire about the credentials of the unit, the unit's proprietor has been having tremendous amount of experience and knowledge of the market and also of the other inputs. So, he was able to really make both ends pay with the type of support that we are given. And we have also uh, discussed with the uh, banker and we were able to convince the banker. Enhance his working capital limits. Enhance the working capital limits. So you will notice that it is not just lending money that matters, but what is required is continuous counseling, mentoring, and holding the enterprise, finding out really what difficulties he is encountering, and then this much of time is not available with the banks today. With the multifarious types of activities they are having, they are not in a position to extend such facility. And that uh, handhold, which is our ESP, uh, you know, will really pull out many of the enterprises. And we have uh, been able to convince a few banks which are uh, now traveling with us. And yesterday there was an announcement 
that all NBFCs are eligible for co-lending, and in that prospect, I see number of good number of banks, this in Telangana, coming forward to uh, work with us and co-lend, and then bail out many of the enterprises that are at the brink of becoming NPAs, so that we can make Telangana an NPA free state. But I am uh, constrained by time, uh, so I'm taking uh, the coordinating we have closed the last session because others have taken away more time. Now I would uh, request the other panelists to take ten minutes see, and then we can to open. So I request Mr. Sanjay Jain to make his point, please. Sanjay Jain, sir, you are Sanjay you are on mute, sir. Is it audible now? Yeah. Uh, good yeah. afternoon, sir. Panel uh, uh, chair, uh, Dr. A. M. Raju. Uh, my co-panelist, Valdim uh, Vaidya ji and uh, Neeraj Kumar ji, and uh, CIA office bearer and uh, the MSM, dear MSM. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, first of all, let me express my gratitude to CIA for giving us opportunity to work uh, among you and discuss uh, schemes which are available for the MSME, for their growth, for uh, their survival going forward, and uh, various schemes which have been uh, promoted by Government of India, various banks, SIDBI, and all that. Uh, let me start with uh, the thing of SIDBI. Uh, SIDBI is a special institution for MSME. Uh, it operates various schemes for the promotion, financing, and development of the MSME. It is not like any other commercial bank which has got uh, uh, branches at every nook and corner and uh, has been engaged into various uh, kind of activities, whether it is saving account, current account, uh, MSME lending, large corporates, personal loan, vehicle loan. It is a special, special institution only concentrating on promotion, financing, and development of the MSME. Should we implement various schemes of government of India for uh, like subsidy schemes, like infrastructure development scheme, like uh, liquidity support to various institutions, promoting new and new institutions for helping the MSME in their growth journey. All of us know how important MSMEs are for the growth of the country, for the growth of the GDP, in terms of employment, in terms of production, exports. I think I need not repeat it. All of us are aware of it. So when the pandemic hit, uh, how uh, banks have responded to that, how CDB has responded to that to help the MSME. So when the pandemic hit, before that also, there were some sectors which were under stress like automobile and some other sectors which were going through the slowdown. That MS, uh, this uh, pandemic has hit the country, the economy or the world very, very adversely. Uh, many of the MSMEs, may, most of the sectors of MSME have been facing the existential uh, situation. Uh, their survival was at stake. So what, there are different steps which have been taken by various stakeholders, which include CDB and uh, uh, Government of India. Started with uh, like uh, it was started with the like moratorium. First step which was taken by the uh, institutions is to allow the moratorium to all the MSMEs. Things from 1st March onwards, uh, there was a six months moratorium on the installment and interest. Then to facilitate the uh, flow of credit to the MSME, a special liquidity window was opened by RBI through SIDBI, through NABAD, NHB and other institutions for liberal credit to the different sectors of the country, which include MSME. SIDBI was given 15,000 crore uh, window, which has been extended to MSME directly as well as through uh, NBFCs, MFI, and banks because NBFC, MFI were finding it difficult to raise finance because of um, because of liquidity crunch after ILFS uh, issue. So um, not many lenders, not um, many market uh, operators were extending assistance to NBFC, MFI. So SIDBI was given a special mandate and. CDB has extended substantial line of credit to these market intermediaries for extending assistance to the MSMEs. Then uh, for facilitating, like uh, when pandemic is there, and actually visit etc. is difficulty. Uh, so key visit or uh, electronic visit was started by us so that uh, without visit, uh, actually physically visiting, we could have extended the assistance. 
then every bank including siddi started their own scheme before this guaranteed emergency credit line came so that msme can face this difficult time because orders are not there cash flows are not there to face the challenging time every bank like 10% uh, line of credit siddi came out with 15% uh, liquidity support scheme for existing customers of the bank then uh, came out the uh, reduced margin on the working capital because uh, Okay, we have increased the limit, but it cannot be availed unless until margins are reduced. So to face the difficulty, again margins were reduced so that uh, MSMEs can avail higher limit, higher drawing power within the uh, approved limit. These were the immediate measures which were taken by CBD and all the banks, all the, uh, the same. Then government of India came out with the uh, Aapnirbhar Bharat uh, scheme in which uh, number of schemes were uh, introduced. First and foremost scheme was the guaranteed emergency credit line scheme. 20% all of us are aware it is a automatic line of uh, scheme where bank does not have the discretion as such government has given the eligibility criteria right it has to be standard maybe up to sma uh, one or two as on 29th of february then 20% of uh, fund based outstanding whether it is working capital term loan any fund based 20% was to be sanctioned and one year moratorium thereafter BS one plus three four years was there. Rate rate of interest was also lower. Processing fee is mostly paid by all the banks. No prepayment charges uh, is applicable under the scheme. So very very sweetened kind of a scheme was uh, uh, introduced in which banks have already extended two lakh crore. In earlier discussion, the point has come why it has been only two lakh crore. Why it has not been? Uh, we have not been able to exhaust the three lakh crore. As discussed earlier, many of the good MSMEs. I mean, like uh, all the banks, including CIB, we have also extended offer letter to all the eligible units. Around 20 to 25 percent of the eligible units have shown, no, no, we don't want this assistance, which will increase our debt burden. We we can continue with exit. So around 25, 20 to 25 percent of the good units have opted out of the scheme. That is why this is uh, still up to two two lakh crore. And uh, not able to reach the three lakh crore. So that is the basic reason. Then there is a uh, gap in sanction and dispersion again because uh, the sanction is there then good units are availing in installments tranches depending upon their requirement because once they avail the full amount interest starts accruing so they are availing in say one or two three tranches so going forward maybe by november and this will be fully uh, whatever sanction amount will be fully dispersed so this scheme helps the existing customers of the bank by extending 20 so that they can continue their operation during this pandemic and maybe one or two, three months going forward. But here one lack, uh, one gap is there. I don't know. I think CIE like uh, institution or uh, association should take it up. Uh, I think under the overall package, the units which have not availed any assistance from any bank or institution have been left out. That is the uh, one area where presently there is no scheme available. Maybe uh, trade bodies, uh, CIA can take up with government of India uh, to come out with a separate scheme for the units, for the MSMEs, which have not availed any assistance from any. They have been left out in this package and they are facing the difficult times because earlier they were able to manage with their own funds. They did not borrow. But now due to pandemic, they require the institutional support. Some sort of scheme similar to maybe credit guarantee line scheme should be launched for the uh, new to bank customers or uh, MSMEs which have not availed the assistance. That is a one big gap because still in India, large number of micro and small enterprises have not availed the assistance from the banking institution and the FCO MFI. So that is one area where uh, CIA can play an important role. Uh, then second scheme, as uh, Dr. Raju has told, 20% uh, this 10% subordinated debt scheme. This is first scheme was for the standard account. This is scheme is for SMA2 and NP account. Uh, uh, so whole of the MSMEs, whether it is standard, is covered in the 20% scheme, and then the remaining NP SMA is covered under the uh, subordinated scheme, where funds are again guaranteed by a government of India through credit guarantee scheme. Uh, uh, offtake under this scheme is low because here it is not automatic kind of scheme. Guaranteed credit line is automatic scheme without any discussion. Here, viability is to be established. Naturally, uh, it is. Uh, it takes some time, documents, paperwork, and uh, processes to establish the uh, viability of the unit. Uh, help from a specialized institution like Telangana Industrial Health Clinic can be taken by the banks to establish the viability of the unit and then extend assistance. Maybe going forward. Uh, Assistance under this scheme might 
pick up another scheme which was launched was the fund of fund uh, scheme 10000 crore uh, daughter uh, mother daughter fund where government of india will uh, launch a 10000 crore fund which will leverage 50000 crore from the market or other uh, stakeholders and which will be provided as equity support to the startups and the msmes this scheme again is uh, i think in initial stages not much uh, has been done in this so this is for the additional assistance now for the survival of six months now going forward our msme may face challenges to service the loan because moratorium has been uh, over by august now september onwards regular payment has to be done and msme is finding it difficult to service because of pandemic so government of india rbi has come out with a restructuring scheme for survival immediate funds were made available moratorium was given for future maybe next one year or two years moratorium up to two years can be extended by the banks under the restructuring scheme so any unit which is facing uh, difficulty can approach existing lender for restructuring of their scheme and uh, additional moratorium up to two years and other other facilities under the restructuring package can be considered by the bank now i will dwell upon um, uh, in two three minutes about some of the special scheme which can help the msme with their growth journey now because now the question of survival is there for that uh, additional funds have been made available now for growth uh, what we need is like if we need working capital or if we need the capex if we need a capex we can make use of equipment finance scheme which is available through cdb we have tied up with the uh, different original equipment manufacturers and uh, to facilitate quick disbursal of assistance we have a special scheme called speed atom star a uh, couple of products are available from cdb for equipment uh, sort of funding for expansion for growth of the msme unit if you have expansion project or if you, you are uh, just uh, doing uh, any other kind of requirement capex you can avail some loan assistance for uh, your expansion or diversification project now coming to the working capital part of it for working capital there could be different schemes uh, one uh, guaranteed line uh, 20% guaranteed credit line is there then there is a scheme called business loan scheme which can be availed this is a open loan scheme which is available against security to the msmes which can be availed in tranches depending upon your requirement as you get the order this open line can be availed for capex for working capital payment of salary payment of gst state dues or any other genuine business requirement open loan scheme depending upon your performance the past performance and the security availability assistance under this is available for your growth requirement and uh, different other schemes are also there i will stop here uh, because these are the main schemes which are there any kind of financial assistance what i would uh, uh, submit here is that there is a intent from all the stakeholders there is a effort from all the stakeholder to handle to support the msme a uh, lot of efforts have been done uh, i'm not sure whether it is reaching to all and every msme but certainly it has reached to a great number of msme further more needs to be done to reach other who are left out maybe new schemes maybe uh, more popularizing scheme sharing the information with the msmes uh, uh, we can reach to the more and more msme uh, that's it for now if any questions is then we can discuss thank you very much uh questions we will uh, push it to the end now i can request mr uh venim uh, vaidya of the sbi to give his uh, views about the way in which msmes are being funded in our state and also in the country how we are moving and where exactly we are likely to land thank you sir Uh, thank you sir uh, respected uh, rm raju garu uh, jain garu and uh, other panelists uh, i will briefly tell about the uh, schemes that are available for the uh, msmes especially and uh, <clears throat> we have got what is called popularly i will uh, normally tell about the schemes which are collateral free so Uh, the first one that comes to our mind is uh, mudra and even in that again e mudra in view of the pandemic this thing and all that uh, e mudra scheme has been introduced by uh, especially state bank of india wherein you need not submit any documents to anybody just you need to have what is called one bank account wherein the uh, proper address proof proper aadhar number and pan number is given and entered in the bank uh, details 
so that you can apply online within 10 to 15 minutes up to 50000 50000 your account is credited no need for any documentation no need to go to the bank no even what is called pre sanction inspection also is done within 15 minutes of your application that under through e mudra uh, application your account will be credited up to 15 50000 50 and this is one of the things and uh, all the especially even before this treatment of scheme came into existence this was there a e mudra and uh, most of the small uh, business people they are very happy with this scheme and then as it is as said it's again mudra mudra again we have opt out uh it is a scheme wherein it is uh, given for what is called purchase of uh, equipment working capital or whatever it is so this under mudra also this mudra scheme also is covered under what is called uh, uh, cgfmu credit guarantee fund for micro units this is guaranteed by cgfmu and then we have one more scheme called called stand up india wherein uh, what is called uh, all sc st and women borrowers women borrowers irrespective of the caste they are eligible under the scheme wherein this is available from right from 10 lakhs up to maximum of 1 crores and this is covered under what is called cg ssi credit guarantee scheme for stand up india so here also no collateral is insisted here margin what is called it will be ranging from 10% to 25% depending on the activity depending on the unit location and all that <clears throat> and uh, we have also called cgt msc scheme wherein Uh, that is credit guarantee trust for micro and small enterprises where up to 2 crores no collateral is insisted and all viable uh, units are uh, uh, sanctioned under this uh, cgtm scheme uh, especially for startups this is a very good scheme which they can avail of and one new scheme when, which i would like to uh, i mean because of the um, pandemic this thing and all that clp that is psp loans in 59minutes.com so you can visit any of the this thing under this uh, through this portal uh, within 59 minutes you will get a what is called in principle approval and once you get the in principle approval you have to give the required uh, documents and within one week the account amount will be sanctioned this does also within one week this is also monitored by what is called dfs so banks are also very very particular that these schemes is taken to its logical end and uh, as uh, jayanth has said i also agree with his one view that uh, under gcl only existing customers are covered up to 20% of the outstanding uh, as on the 29th february but there are very very uh, lot many units which who have not availed credit but they are suffering because of the covid so i strongly uh, agree with mr jayanth sir Uh, that uh, they should the government of india should come up with a new scheme for those who are not avail credit uh, with some modalities and all that so that they are not uh, denied of the credit in this pandemic times i i think uh, ca also uh, can take up this issue at uh, various levels of dfs ministry of finance whatever so that these people these businessmen these msmes are not uh, left out of the mainstream of thing for msmes uh, helping helping hand from the banks when it comes to them <clears throat> and apart from that even before uh, uh, in uh, every in the first week of march itself uh, before the gcl scheme was announced by government of india and the uh, atmanirbhar scheme and the state bank of india had come up as a proactive measure that pc ecl scheme that is covid credit emergency credit line that was only 10% of the outstanding so once the government came up with that 20% scheme apart from 10% which had already been extended to the eligible borrowers the bank had extended 20% also so 10 plus 20% uh, the state bank of india as a special measure had extended uh, this uh, 30% emergency credit line uh as a uh, proactive measure and <clears throat> we have also a scheme uh, that is of course it is applicable to all banks also msme restructuring now it is msme restructuring not only it is uh, npa accounts are eligible but even standard accounts if they feel any stress in the in their day to day activities even they also can apply and get the what is called moratorium additional finance 
lesser rate of interest whatever it is so these are basically the schemes and i now i think it will be uh, i feel it should be more of a question answer session and uh, that would be more helpful to the customers or entrepreneurs thank you sir thank you so much thank you mr vaidya so may i request <coughs> mr neeraj kumar neeraj kumar yeah just uh, trying to unmute so am i audible yeah fine yeah, yeah. so uh, first of all uh, thank you so much for uh, inviting me here for you know uh, in the uh, conference and uh, with uh, due respect to dr uh, rajo mr sanjay jain uh, uh, mr vaidya so i would i would uh, like to present few points uh, where i was listening to the earlier conversations also and the points being put up uh, by mr sanjay jain okay so uh, we uh, typically deal in the uh, nano segment uh, of the msmes wherein you know uh, the ticket prices may be uh, below range of 10 lakh so typically dealing with the shopkeepers okay and the uh, roadside vendors and uh, other uh, uh, small shops and uh, uh, businesses so which we have been helping so when the pandemic struck okay there was lot of uh, uh, chaos uh, uh, in the businesses which we saw and obviously there was a, a loss of demand and uh, with this new normal as we have been uh, you know finding this word uh, with the new normal there is a lot of demand uh, shift which has happened if you see people have been uh, uh, you know uh, in their houses for more than 3 uh, 4 months and slowly the unlock happened so there were very low uh, uh, sales uh, uh, in the textile okay there was low demand in the textile low demand uh, on the motor front okay so the, these all small small businesses when we start assessing okay the uh, typical demand pattern from the customers have changed so these people have actually suffered a lot and uh, uh, when we uh, see uh, the uh, the pattern of exactly how do we help them uh, come back on their feet okay it's basically we see uh, that due to that one month one and a half month lockdown there was destruction okay there was a loss of inventory also in this uh shops when they reopen uh so they had to be supported uh for coming back to the original inventory we uh, they had in their shops okay the people uh, a lot of migrant people work on these small shops they had uh, gone and they had to scout for higher cost of uh, uh, people so there were various various issues which they had to uh, really fight okay so uh, we uh, actually supported them in fact we, uh, 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 when we implemented our Uh, moratorium uh, which was announced by the government okay the, uh, we were one of the companies where actually we uh, app initio we have charged only simple interest to the customer and we have not levied any kind of penalties and uh, the dues were actually deferred so currently the uh, uh, the tenure which is uh, uh, their actual uh, 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 the moratorium taken by the customer that is the tenure we have not uh, burdened customer by putting up the um, uh, uh, compounding uh, kind of interest which the waiver uh, has been uh, given by the government that we had uh, that that was like you know huge uh, hit taken by the company as it is but then after the opening started we launched lot of uh, 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 products as such from the, uh, the gold angle from the unsecured angle also so i'll i'll take you all through uh, one by one so uh, as much well as uh, it started we started the research india uh pradhan gold loan okay that's typically targeted to these kind of people for restarting their business and uh, uh, the loan starts from around uh, you know uh, 3 lakhs and above wherein uh, most of the money goes in replenishing the uh, inventory and restarting the uh, uh, working capital so that has helped we have uh, dispersed uh, you know kind of numbers there and um, uh, looking at the other uh, products we Uh, also launched uh, uh, gold loans for purchase of uh, laptops and mobiles for people uh, attending the uh, online classes okay that uh, those were also uh, taken care of and uh, on a secured part we relaunched uh, so we uh, uh, edi that's a uh, equity daily installment loans uh, which we run uh, through our uh, 3600 branches across we relaunched it uh, in the month of uh, june 
and uh, we are reaching out to each and every customer trying to assess uh, trying to understand the requirement and uh, uh, we have started funding them as such uh, so uh, typically what we have seen there is a uh, mismatch between you know uh, 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 the working capital uh, the demand and what has to be given from the uh, companies so when we when we uh, say the products okay what uh, as as a product manager when we are i at least design some products most of the time the credit criteria you know are the important uh, factors which have to be assessed for giving these uh, loans so there we can see a large gap between those credit criteria becoming stringent because of this pandemic uh, uh, issue because there is a uh, low you know risk awareness in the in the institutions and wherein at the same time uh, people who are not paying okay people uh, who have actually defaulted maybe uh, in, uh, in this moratorium period and how the industry looks at people who had taken the moratorium okay will also uh, will add uh, to the negative points okay during the credit assessment is a worry so this will increase the gap between demand and supply of loans between the msme and the uh, uh, the uh, financiers so uh to to bridge this gap in some way the financiers will have to take an extra step to be more risk taking and somewhere the government as they have been pitching in to the picture and uh, trying to uh, you know create some demand by uh, giving lot of socks to the uh, public in, uh, in general and for msme these special schemes have uh, come into picture and uh, uh, i can only hope that uh, this uh, gap comes down as soon as possible and we reach out to these msmes for uh, uh, you know uh, funding them so other than that i think most of the points were covered about eclgs and uh, whatever uh, uh, things have been started by by the government through cfb have been taken care of by uh, 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 the other panelists mr sanjay jain and uh, sibil uh, we understand how uh, there was a dip uh, in the month of Ma march and april that was primarily because nothing was open okay if there is no application to the bank then how do i uh, you know hit on the civil so all these hits which were happening happening on the civil at that time were basically uh, these personal loans which are digitally available through various apps and if you see these personal loans were uh, being questioned for at that time uh, were being requested for and as soon as it opened Uh, we see that people who are more in stress okay the low rated or maybe a subprime uh, category of people they had gone back and they had been aggressively scouting for loans and uh, again as i said the risk of our personnel okay is that uh, uh, after the pandemic even all these institutions are looking out for some cues of you know when to out of time yeah uh, I'll, i'll finish in two minutes sir so uh, so you know this all these gaps have to uh, be filled and everything has to fill uh, uh, fall in place basically to ensure that the uh, pre covid level uh, demand supply uh, uh, things are in place and all these msmes they quickly scale up to uh, that level and are uh, in a financially healthy positions so that's it from my side maybe we can discuss uh, around the question answers Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Nehru, for giving the time to make to your point. Uh, now I would be able to give about five minutes for question and answer session before ending with the session. Any questions, please, from the participants? to appear uh, all are waiting for the lunch and actually this panel is the lunch and the party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with your permission, uh, uh, Raram Rajgarh, with your permission, uh, uh, for one point that uh, there is an economics with the point that Sanjay Garu has raised it. It's a very valid point that uh, Uh, the government of india in atmanirbhar uh, case uh, they have actually given a uh, the scheme of 20% uh, money for the only for the existing uh, borrowers it is really unfortunate that there are so many uh, uh, the msmes who depend on their own finance 
and uh, this is the time where they were badly hit on this. And if they probably uh, were really looking for a, some kind of an assistance at the need of the our uh, situation like. So this is something which we need to take it up in a serious manner because uh, definitely maybe the situation will continue for some more time. It's not going to be ending in just a one month or two months. So maybe until next, uh, uh, I mean, until the financial year ending in the March or something like that. And some business normally for the MSME comes in the end of ending, so most of the business. So they need some kind of a funding and cash flow. So maybe from the CP, if you can just take it up in a serious note, yes, from the CAI, definitely we'll write to the uh, central government this thing. And Adam Rajagur also can help uh, write this matter to the government and to the central government or whatever the point that is from the health clinic point of it, because he's a, a very uh, inactive role with respect to the you know, industrial health clinic. So probably he could help us also in this matter, and we will all collectively work on this particular point. That's what I may submission is. Thank Can you, I come in, sir? Please. Next thing, we have to with plenty. We should strive to see that this uh, incentive would not miss this client. We will work right from the day now. Maybe that our period of at least one week to ten days before the next incentive scheme is announced. We will come. We will make the army come to a conclusion. And uh, uh, before I uh, conclude, I would. Uh, anyway, anyone else want to speak? Sir, can I come in, sir? Uh, yes, please. Uh, uh, I have one small thing. Is that they need not wait for the government of India to announce a scheme. They can as well come based on their balance sheets, whatever it is, 19, 20, whatever it is, uh, so that the banks are uh, open to what is called um, sanctioning them without this 20% or whatever, without having any criteria for that. They can, uh, banks are willing to uh, sanction them based on their uh, financials. We need not wait for the government to announce a scheme as such. Uh, great, sir. I was told that this scheme, I'm sorry, I, I'm just taking a small uh, point. This scheme must probably have some uh, consistent rate of interest. So yeah, if, it comes yeah. from the, if it comes from the government of India, because when MSME yes. has this, you know, paying a, a other day, I mean, other uh, uh, the the, uh, the the participant was saying that no, we don't get the money in time. So the rate of interest is also more, very important. So once the government of India announces, there will be some consistent rate of interest. There will be some beneficial to the MSME. That's what I want to just say. Yes, sir. I agree with you on that point. Right. Over to Rajgaru. Thank you. I have only a few points to make. Number one, the all the banks can take advantage of the industrial health clinic in case for strategic services. And we will be very happy to help with monetization. And we have three schemes exclusively for the stresses. Amount finance, just finance, and marginal loan assistance And for women, we have a very special window where the women enterprises, startups can avail facility from us, uh, the entire loan scheme, and then uh, at very low rate of interest. You know, we our rates of interest are simple in, uh, rates of interest, number one. Number two, they are between nine and ten percent. And uh, we can definitely help all the financial institutions who want to really take our services for revival and restructuring. We have put a pre-pack for revival on our website. It is available for the, and it is confirmed to the Reserve Bank of India's instructions. And it is available both for the banks and also the entrepreneurs to look at and then make their projections rightly and go forward. And I would here emphasize that banks are still looking at balance sheets and financing. In the last two years, no balance sheet will show you the profit. It is only pre-slowdown period. Perhaps all SME units can show some profit in their balance sheets. That's why it is necessary that banks should shift from balance sheet funding to cash flow funding. If you working capital is financed based on the cash flows, it provides an opportunity for the bank to interact with the clientele on an ongoing basis. If it is unseated funding, 
give vaccine for all one vaccine have to limit and then thereafter forget about the unit unit has to make its own arrangements to come back and communicate with the uh, bank so the communication between the lender and the borrower is extremely important to make the setup very vibrant and viable uh, and this point of communication has also been made by one of the speakers in the previous uh, session and we should really make this effect communication between the lender and borrower more effective so that the trust between them gets re established today lack of trust is what that is preventing from the uh, banks to lend for the uh, msme units and msme units have to really digitize themselves and government of telangana has entered into an arrangement with global link for providing and also with a software form for providing free uh, software uh, that is that for 20000 msme in the state and i would request every bank to make use of this and any any sanction they make they must make it compulsory that every unit must have a computer and software and uh, when it is possible for online uh, you know regulation of the unit online monitoring of the unit online supervision of the unit will become possible and this will really speed up the matters because we have been able to follow up the units mainly because we have digitized all the units that we have financed 67 units that we have financed or we have assisted with various advisors all of them have been digitized and therefore we are in a position to monitor their health on an ongoing basis so monitoring card of the units must be kept with the concerned branch manager when it will become easier and i would request on the banks to really consider this aspect because free software is now available uh, at the hands of the government i would request all the banks to make use of and make sure that all the units are digitized so that they fall into the regulatory uh, you know compliance thank you very much for the excellent uh, and yeah yeah this opportunity thank you sir, uh, sir before closing we have a qu uh, question from mr kamlakar uh, okay. we have uh, daniel uh, request you to uh, unmute the, mr kamlakar uh, mr kamlakar yeah. uh, you please ask your query yeah good afternoon sir see uh, we were getting lot of loans and all um, without collateral but many of the cases what happens is we need to give a lot of bank guarantees to get our payment or you know as a uh, even to get the acceptance of order and all which it is a very huge burden you know 5 to 10 percent at the beginning of taking the order so is there any bank which can give uh, a bank guarantee a collateral fee as such you are giving the loan instead of the loan can we ask for a bank guarantee is it possible that's what my question you got it yeah yeah uh, right now we don't have any sir you are muted vaidya sir here vaidya hello am i audible sir yeah hello am i audible sir yes sir yeah just as they give fund by facility is without any collateral uh, there is no scheme as such as of now for giving bank guarantee without any collateral uh, i think we, we will need to examine this sir this is but it's a good uh, question you see in most of the cases what msme is doing they are availing the loan they are trying to you know create an asset and fdi on the same bank and then take them so it is is a cumbersome process right to uh, get the uh, bank guarantee done so that will lead a lot of people to get realize the payments also so many of the places we can give a bank guarantee and get realize the payment so but one thing is here yeah. one thing is here bank guarantees are not given on a stand alone basis normally it should be we should have also have a working capital facility like cc whatever Yeah, correct, sir. I'm just saying. So, bank guarantees are now, uh, you know, very much required to realize some payments or to take orders and all, uh, rather than the working capital alone, actually. So, that's also one aspect that has to be looked into. So, probably some extent, maybe uh, you can consider that also. 
Mr. Devakar Singh wants to ask a question. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Devakar Singh, please go ahead. Yeah. See, uh, uh, I, the Telangana Industrial Health Clinic is a very good uh, concept. But what I uh, see that, like, uh, in terms of stuck up uh, MSMEs, they need a lot of section marketing support and enablement. Is there any initiatives in? Uh, promoting their uh, uh, sales and marketing efforts. Yeah, on a case-to-case basis, we are helping people to really locate mark, new markets or create uh, a process to reach the new markets. So we give marketing support by means of an advice. We give okay. for members. <coughs> Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I guess we came to the end of the conference. Now I request uh, uh, Mr. Avs Reddy sir to conclude the conference. Uh, thank you, Narendra. Uh, thank you, everybody. All the panel chairmen, Varun Rajgaru and uh, Amit Patel and uh, Abhijit, and all the panelists, Sanjay Garu and Vaidyanath Garu, and all the panelists, Sailor panelists. Now. So thank you so much, and we had really interactive sessions. And uh, I hope yes, the MSME will be a continue to be a primary concern for all of us because it's uh, the backbone of the country and everybody knows it, but we it's only not only just a lip sympathy, but we have to really show some kind of an action in terms of the, uh, you know, the extending the uh, support to the MSME needy people. So I hope that, uh, you know, things will be in a better shape because uh, earlier panelists were saying that this is a better time for an MSME. Hopefully everybody will take that as a serious note. Thank you very much. Thank you one and all everybody for this uh, participating in this thing. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Madam Thank, Thank you, Sanjay Garu. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.